live. We're live. It's fate always late. A oh. wizard is never late. Or, well, fas we're fashionably late. We arrive precisely when we intend to. Yes. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing? Welcome <laughs> on in, everyone. Oh, I need a pop out chat. I am here. I am prepared. I think we're reasonably prepared, if I'm honest. Um, we're something. Yeah. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna be building up a PC today. Uh, I'm just adjusting windows. There we go. Um, and I'm starting to zoom that as well. Enhance. Uh, what do we want? That level or? Um, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Cool. All right. There we go. It will uh, not make the pronunciation of names any better. No, <laughs> it will not. <laughs> Right. Um, there we go. Yes. Hello, everyone. Yes, the sh the shop is closed. It's it's all good. Um, so there will be no interruptions. Um, let's see. Well. Oh yeah. I'm, <laughs> so I'm just going to get rid of this now. If it's if it's in view, someone will just call the shop and be like, "Oh, oh, oh I made the phone ring." I made the funny. I did. I did the funny. Yeah. Don't actually do that. It's just annoying. <laughs> Because I'm not going to answer it, so it's just annoying. <laughs> uh, right. Three hours to fit a MOBO. Shush. Shut. Uh, we, we... I mean, as, as, as was said last time, it'll only take 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I, in, at the time, what I was implying when I said that was, this is supposed to be a 30-minute job, but we'll see how it goes. That's that was what I was trying to imply. So yes. Anyway, but still, welcome guys. Uh, any chance that we're going to share the Liami lighting setup we mentioned on your FB post? Um, I I wasn't planning on it, although I have been thinking because um, this week. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, um, uh, I I I changed the lighting setup on the Liami that we were working on last week. Um, not to nothing super exotic. Um, I just wanted to put on a new colour scheme because I was bored of the rainbow puke. Um, and um, I posted a picture of it. And also, uh, just for other interest's sake, uh, um, people were saying sort of, oh, you should put on a comb to bring the two PCI Express cables together. Um, that was mentioned on the podcast. I actually did change it. I changed it from being two single cables to a unified cable because um, I was like, oh, if I'm actually going to plug in a single connector card... I just bend one out the way, you know, and that's what I did, and it does look so much better. So I did change that after the post as well. But um, um, yeah, at any rate, RGB setup. Um, I wasn't going to share anything about that. However, what I um, I'm I'm thinking because <laughs> because I'm thinking I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say <laughs> while I'm saying it. Uh. Right. So. The RGB on that computer is Asus AuraSync and MSI Dragon Center, uh, with MSI being purely for the graphics card. And both of them are crap. Um, and setting both of them up, they were both unreliable and didn't really work in the way that I wanted. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try some of the third-party RGB solutions. Oh, um, did you use the... I have tried Open RGB and ah, I tried nice. Signal RGB. Um, so OpenRGB is, uh, as the name suggests, an open source one. Okay. SignalRGB is the third party one that's been doing the rounds on Linus Tech Tips and places like that. Um, so, um, And after looking at those, I was like, hmm, I have interesting things to say about these. So I might come... Uh, and I've been threatening to do RGB setup videos for a while. So I might actually get serious and do... Um, uh, I might get serious and actually... Okay, Night Fusion, you look me in the eye and tell me that Asus Aura Crate is a good system. You know, <laughs> look at me in the eye as you say it. <laughs> look me in the eyes and tell, them, tell yeah. me that Armory Crate is a good product. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, where was I? Uh, so yeah, um, so I might, I might actually knuckle down and do that series on different RGB apps. Um, and like the problem, one of the things holding me up is like I haven't looked at the Razer one or anything like that, so I might need to buy just a Razer mouse or just I, I need to buy a Razer something just so no. I can try the Razer software. You don't. And, well, I mean, I, I want to try the Razer software just so I can actually give an opinion on it. I know I'm probably not going to like it, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure you can find Razer stuff in a 
parts ones. Maybe, way. but I, I've Is tried pretty... Work? Yeah, I've looked at pretty much all the other RGB solutions except that one now. So I kind of want to have an opinion yeah. on it. You know, I know, NZX, I know NZXT Cam, I know Corsair IQ, I know Armory Prayer, I know Dragon Center, and now I know... So, yeah, the TLDR, open RGB... Um, uh 50 year gamer with the 10 pound super chat thank you very much keep up the great work much appreciated um open rgb uh, it's a very basic looking program however when i um it's extremely lightweight there was no installation i downloaded it and you just run it so That's you cool. just you just dump it on root c you double click the exe it is running That's and cool. you can set it to run on startup so it automatically runs on startup there's no services there's no sdks there's none of that bollocks. You just run an EXE and that's your RGB software running. Because before I started, I had I, I was like, right, I should strip out all of the RGB software from this computer because it had like it's had like four different RGB softwares put on it. And there was so much to remove. Asus was the worst offender for this. There were about 10 items in the apps list relating to Asus RGB or lighting services or plugins or SDKs or this, that, and the other. And I just kept scrolling down the list and going, what? You know, and it was it was obnoxious. I'm not so, saying this is why I dislike RGB. I'm just saying it's a significant part of why I dislike RGB. Absolutely. So so the fact that open RGB was just, it was just a folder with some files and an EXE, and you just run the EXE, big marks straight away. Program itself is very fairly basic looking, but I ran it and it automatically detected all of the RGB That's present cool. in the system. It got the motherboard, it got the graphics card, it got the RAM, and it got That's the cool. two RGB strips connected to the motherboard. Nice. With one of the RGB strips going to the RGB hub, which is doing fans and stuff like that. So it detected everything straight off the bat, zero config. The only thing it said was, you've got two RGB strips connected, how many LEDs are on each strip? which is a thing that you do need to set when you're doing yeah. RGB. Still. You've got to tell it how long your RGB chains are. Because obviously, if you're doing effects like um, the meet, uh, like chaser effects, it needs to know where the end of the strip is. Um, so, um, uh, and Heavy Hakage as well with the $10 for the Cider Fund. Thank you very much, my dude. Much appreciated. Um, so, um, uh, so, yeah, as I say, it detected everything. The, and it was very intuitive to use as well. Like you could just say, um, you could just set blue, apply to all devices, and just everything changed to just static blue. That's cool. So Which if, one was this again, sorry? Open RGB. Op oh, open yeah. RGB. So if you, if, you want, if you want a zero fuss solution to just ch set all of your RGB to just a fixed color, you can just do color, apply to all, done. And that's it, you, you're done. Um, can, do you then still need the software? It needs to run on startup to apply the effect, yes. However, it's incredibly uh, lightweight, though. So I was just wondering if you could use it to set stuff to off so, once. Yes. It does have an option on a lot of the devices that there's a button there saying save to device. So if the device supports it, I think you can set it as what's known as hardware lighting, where it doesn't require the software to run. But this, I, I haven't done testing to see what, cool. what of mine has that. But yeah. this is very, very hit and miss. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. But I was just wondering. If you're not, if you're not use, if you're using third-party RGB, you're not using a system like Corsair, it's very unlikely that all of your stuff will have this. So in which case, I was you just need wondering to run if I anyway. could use it as a thing to just go RGB just on my configure. GPU off. Yeah. Will it stay <laughs> off? Yeah. You know. Um, I think the answer to that is no. Again, depending on the GPU. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in which case. Um, the M the MSI GPU that I've got in there that does it, it has a save to device option, but it doesn't seem to actually do anything. Yeah. So it seems to be very hit and miss. So um uh so yeah. However, the the main thing was obviously with Open RGB immediately now I've got one program that can do everything instead of yeah. needing two programs that are extremely unreliable. That's Only cool, disadvantage is it doesn't have any nice effects in it. Um, but can so you build if, nice effects with it? No, is the short answer to that. I see. Um, so, it, so it is very simple. Yeah. And there is nothing you can build up. That's right. It can do per LED color though. So um, you could, you can do some nice two two tone effects with it and stuff like. I've got two tone effect on that at the moment, which as you can see looks quite yeah. pleasing. And the effect on the graphics card, there's a bit of a wave chase effect on the graphics card. 
it did have that in, and I was like, oh, that looks good. That adds a little bit of animation to the computer yeah. just on the graphics card alone. That seems to depend on the device as as to whether it yeah. can do that, because it can't do that tracer effect on anything other than the graphics card. I wonder if so it's... So I think it's built into the, the graphics card. The way that the RGB kind of states what it can do. Yeah, I think it depends on the plugin as well, because obviously yeah. in its program file folder, it's probably got a folder with... 100 pl plugins for common RGB yeah. devices. So I'm guessing it depends on how good the plugin for the particular device you're using is. Yeah. But uh, at any rate, I would expect it to be potentially limited uh, for actually building up nice effects. Mm. But for simplicity and lightweight ease of use, it's absolute top. Yeah. But you've also, at the very least, been able to set a static two-tone mm. effect. With that's it. right. Which, to be honest, Which a is lot kind of, of what you want. That's all most people need. Yeah. I've, I've been a big fan of the Starry Night effect lately because star, the Starry Night effect, uh, it, you just have a slight yeah. twinkle um, and that you can do really good effects on that. Um, uh, two I think the starry issue night. with a lot of that, though, is mm. that oftentimes it's too fast. That's right. It's very difficult. The slowest option is still way faster than you'd want the fastest option. I was talking to I was talking to my friend the other night about RGB and he said exactly the same thing. He said I've been looking at Starry Night as well. I just wish I could make the speed dial go even lower. Yeah. Um however, it's still a nice effect. Um so it it you it it would be nice if it had a starry a, a standard Starry Night thing because it can address all the RGB all the LEDs on a per LED basis. That's cool. Though. So it it would be capable of doing effects. It just doesn't have them. But I, also, though, because it's open source, there's probably some mad lads out there that could program effects for it. But yeah, at any rate, absolutely. yeah. So that's that's open RGB. The other one I looked at, Signal RGB, I wasn't super impressed, if I'm honest. Um, it did detect everything. Um, so, you know, obviously, it's a cheap, its primary objective of consolidating multiple RGB apps into one, it has achieved. Um, however, um, uh, the way it works is it has a canvas. So you set up just a square and you add your RGB devices onto that and you position them in a, a layout of your choosing and then it applies a visual effect to that square. So for example, RGB oh, cube would just be a scrolling rainbow wave across the square. Oh, that's kind of cool though. Yeah, so the position of the items dictates what colors they would have. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, though. so this is interesting because if you have an RGB strip going from top to bottom of your case, you would position that top to bottom of the square yeah. um, or horizontal depending on what orientation yeah. it's in uh, and likewise you can then set it up so if you've got your ram here and your graphics card down there you position those on the canvas to make sure that as the green moves down it moves down through the ram and then through the graphics card yeah so it's it's not the it's not the what you would expect it to look like but when you think about it you're like that actually makes a lot of sense yeah, for sequencing cool. all the rgb the only problem, so, but the only problem with it is, is that it's very dependent on you getting what's called a theme for that canvas. Yeah. And pretty much all of the themes I looked at were all just basically just a an abstract picture with something moving on it to create an effect. And pretty much all of them, as far as I'm concerned, boil down to a variation of the Starry Night effect in yeah. different color schemes. Um, but in a way, that's not really an issue because the Starry Night effect is actually very nice and yeah. I'm a massive fan of it. So um, it looks good. I think I need to look into how much work it is to actually make a custom theme because that's one of the drawbacks is I, because it's all based on themes, mm. I think it's actually going to be very difficult to make your own theme. Like there's no option for just set color, you know. Uh. You've got to build... I, so I think you've got... I think that's the, one of the weaknesses is that it's very reliant on you browsing through themes and finding something you like. However, what killed yeah. it dead for me, because I was going to use it because I found a beautiful starry night vaporwave effect that I was like, that looks really good. And then I looked at my CPU usage. 5800X, constant 4% CPU load from mm. Signal RGB. Now, 4% of the CPU, uh, you might be like, so, oh, come on, who cares? But also, you've got to bear in mind that that 4% that is just enough to keep the CPU awake all the time. Yeah, It's going to keep it in, a, in a, an active state. So say goodbye to power, any kind of power saving, basically. Yeah. And it's going to sit there constantly, at not on boost, yeah. but certainly not idling. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, for that, and, me, and like, it was also just enough that it wasn't heating up the CPU, but because the CPU wasn't idling, I could hear that the fans were not right down to idle speed. Like, the, I could hear that the water pump, which is the first thing that ramps up on my curves, was not at idle speed. Yeah. And for me, that just immediately killed it dead. I'm like, it's not acceptable that I need to be using CPU cycles yeah. to make the LEDs glow. Yeah. That's absolutely. not acceptable. You know, we should not need to be using 4% of a 5800X to make yeah. the, the LEDs light up. Yeah. And that just killed Signal RGB dead for me. Um, I don't know if it can be optimized. I don't know if I'd done something weird or maybe there are more optimum um, themes that don't do this, but that CPU load is no bueno. So it's worth looking at if you're into yeah. RGB, but that wasn't acceptable for me. And that's why I, I switched back to open RGB. So, um, so yes. Uh, ben Laird, hello from Scotland. Thank you very much for the five quid. Uh, right, so now I've done my rant on, on RGB. Um, the RGB. The, the Rugaba audio Please. quiet again. Turn up your volume, Spud Nugget. <laughs> I've, we are a little bit quiet because the microphone's a little bit far away from us because we, we don't want to put it next to the desk for when we start banging around on the desk. Um, so it will be a little bit quiet, but it's, it's reasonable. It's reasonable. We so. are just not running hot like a hype streamer. <laughs> yeah. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Screams, you want to go faster? <laughs> gas, gas, gas. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. Um, I had an evening the other night where I just listened to... Um, Euro... Not, not, not Eurobeat, but... Yeah. Well, is, is that what the anime is called? The actual, the actual oh, music the anime from is, that anime. Yeah, that that uh, that's initial D, but that initial D is notorious for its Eurobeat yeah. soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. I actually just listened to everything from that. Yeah, it just I found a playlist <laughs> and just had that going. I was just like, ah, oh, I've never watched this, but mm. also this is fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Hartford says a good RG a good hardware RGB controller would use zero CPU. Agreed, and that's one of the reasons why I like hardware RGB controllers like Corsair and um, and NZXT's offerings. Um, like my my Fractal Torrent at home, I ripped the NZXT um, RGB controller out of this case and put it in my Fractal um, for that exact reason because I was, because a hardware controller eliminates the CPU problem, or it can eliminate the CPU. Like you can still the software still has an option for additional management that gives you smoother transitions and stuff like that but um for for day-to-day -day use the hardware control is completely adequate so yeah hmm right um cool so uh right so now i've done my rgb rant but yeah i'm probably going to make some videos about that because as i say i i can talk for a long time about rgb setups because i like rgb but I'm also interested in finding good RGB because there's a lot of just really trash RGB out there. And it's one of those things where it's just like, it should be something that is good, but it's needlessly complicated. And there are a lot of setups out there where you're just like, how did you think this was good design? You know, where just, again, just the lack of unification. Yeah. There are some standards, but there is some standards, but the implementation of a lot of RGB is just terrible oh my and god just, why are there five standards for this we need to create a new standard for this oh my yeah. god why are there six standards mm. it's just yeah it's just bad and yeah ultimately if anyone wants the tldr my tldr will still be corsair just buy corsair you know people will call me a corsair fanboy however it just works man and it is the best one i've used it's not cheap but if you you know if if you want if you want cheap, then you have to jump through hoops. If you want Corsair, it will be really good, but they know it's really good and they've priced it as such. So yeah. At least the fans aren't trash with good RGB. Yeah. That that's that's, that's I feel like is the saving grace. At least the fans are actually reasonably good. Yeah. I've had I've seen some comments on computer builds where people have been like sort of oh he's buying just another Corsair because he's a Corsair fanboy. And I'm like, yeah, because they're good. Yeah, you, you can't like. I say, I, I, I'm in a way, I'm really, really bored of Corsair. 
But the problem is, is you can't go wrong with a Corsair. Yeah. If it's got if it's got the Corsair logo on it, you can guarantee that it will be good. You know. Yeah. So that's that's it. They got a good product. Yeah. It's mm. it's a shame because you don't want to end up in that situation where there is only one person doing something. Yeah. That's it. And because that... obviously, as with every part, monopoly is bad. Yeah, it's why I tr- it's why I've resisted the urge just to chop in Corsair everything into the Lianli. You know, we ended up go- getting the EK AIO for it, and I've got Corsair RGB fans on hand at the moment. Mm. And you know, the thought occurred to me: I was just like, should I just load up the Lianli with all these Corsair RGB fans I've got? I've got a bunch of ML. Uh, I've got a bunch of light loops, which look really, really good. Yeah. But I'm like, it feel at this point, it feels like cheat mode just to put Corsair stuff in it. And I'm like, I want I to actually, I want to actually test and figure out alternatives. So when people are just like, I don't have Corsair stuff, I've got just standard ARGB stuff. Um, what is the best way to control that? Because I, I seem to need three or four different programs for all of the mixed RGB I have. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay, how do we unify a mixed yeah. RGB setup? It's also the case, though, that I'd imagine that the VADA fans that come on the AIO mm. are better AIO fans. Probably. Especially yeah. if they came with an AIO. I would hope from so. From EK. Yeah. You would assume so. Yeah. A lot of people are not big fans of the VADA fans because they've got massive hubs. Um, yeah. But in terms of performance, they seem to be great. Yeah. Um, and I That's think... That's kind of the important part. Yeah. With that, especially when it's like behind a mesh or something. Yeah. Where you can't particularly see the fan as long as the performance is good. And the RGB on it isn't a problem. Yeah, and in what and also I don't mind them so much because they're RGB ones. So the the big hub just means that they've got lots of bright LEDs in, which just diffuse the RGB yeah. very nicely as well. Also, it's a feature yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, exactly. And you can kind of look at it as a feature. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. right. Um, so uh, what's the task for today? Well, the task for today we're building up another computer. Um, so I've got. A bunch of stuff lying around. I was like, I think I've got enough bits to build a computer here, and I kind of want to, um, I want to build up stuff that I've got lying around and get it sold. Basically, um, I'm going to be doing a lot of work on my car this summer, and it's going to be very expensive. So I'm like, I should probably sell all of the stuff I've got lying around. Um, shush. Uh, so um, the bits we've got. This is my old um, NZXT H500, um, which is. It's not a darling case in the community, but it's fit for purpose. Um, you don't really want to run top-end hardware in this, but for mid, for low to mid-range builds, this is a really nice case. So we're gonna, I'm gonna reuse this. Um, it's gonna need some dusting down, so because this got stripped when I built my fractal torrent, um, so and I didn't, I didn't give it any love at the time, so I was just like, I just gutted it out to build the fractal. So we're gonna dust this and use this. Um, we've got a Ryzen 3700X for our CPU, so 3700X. Uh, we've got um, the motherboard we've got here is an Aorus B450 Aorus Pro. Now this one featured on the podcast a couple of weeks ago when we were testing hardware. Uh, apparently it's got a stability problem. We couldn't reproduce it, but also we were trying. We were testing it with a stupid Athlon GE. Um, and so now we're actually going to put a real CPU in this thing and find out if it actually works or not. So that's the motherboard we're putting in it. Um, so uh, motherboard is not a guaranteed thing. We're going to find out. Memory, um, uh, we, I'm going to swap out to a different memory kit after the show. But we've got, um, I've got some G-Skill Trident Z Neo here. And this memory module, the, these two modules, I think they might be faulty. So we want to test those today. If these things don't work, I'll lob this ballistics kit in it that I've got on hand. Um, so we'll have something to make it go. Uh, then power supply. I've got an old Game Max 500, um, GP500 in this case, um, which is a bronze rated power supply. It'll be perfectly fine. Uh, oh, that's RGB. And then, um, yeah, I need to see what RGB is still in there because I've robbed half of the RGB out of that and left the other half in there. So we need to figure. I need yeah, to there was a there was a cable. There was just a cable for ah, this right, fan yeah. that I couldn't work out what it was for. Ah, it's yes. like why are there three cables for this fan? Yes. Uh, then graphics. Ugh. Giraffes. Giraffes. Um, I've got two different ten sixties here. 
Um, both of them are 1066 gigabytes. Um, I've got a palette reference one and I've got this EVGA compact. So we'll stick one of those in there. Don't know which one, whichever one looks nicer, I guess. The EVGA is probably a nicer card, but also the palette will be quieter because it's a twin blower and it'll look bigger in there. So I'm probably going to use the palette. I'm saving this EVGA just for a small computer or something like that. So we'll probably stick one of these 1060s in there. Um, Did you know there's an SSD in this case? No. There is an SSD in this case. Nice. Nice. Uh, it's probably a 250, to be honest. If that's a 500, I'll be like, awesome, that's 40 quid in my pocket. Um, however, it's probably a 250. Is this, a, is, is this an NZXT case as well, this one? Mm. Uh, that one, no. That is... Oh, it's got an NZXT fan. Yeah, this, this, I built this up as an office box, and I just lobbed oh. a fan in the back of it. Um, however, uh, for various reasons, this ended up just coming back into my possession again. But the case is just what it was just a cheap ATX case. So I have zero interest in this. What we're just getting the power supply out of that, and apparently that SSD. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Leon Sugden. Yes, hello there. You sent the the B450. You're pretty sure it was RAM that was the problem and not the motherboard. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, yeah, we'll we'll double check in that case. Did you have more problems with that RAM kit then? That you were using. Greetings from Canada. Hello. What news from the north? <laughs> All right. And the SSD is. It's a two fifty. Oh, doesn't matter. Good enough. Yeah, it's still good to have 250 gig SSDs lying around, just because you can use them for shipping. To... Well, I mean, I could lobby it in an office box sometime, couldn't I? That's all they need. So yes, uh, very well. Right, let's take this thing back out and just have it on hand. Got an Aorus, eagle with a hard on. <laughs> it kind of is. It kind of is, Arnold, you're right. It's a mouth. It's yeah. the lower jaw. That's right, it's going Aah! That's what eagles do, I think. Uh, oh, cooling. Hmm. Uh, do I have any? Oh. I'm just going to check if I've got a CPU cooler for this thing. There is a hyper full one yeah. in the window. Uh, yeah. yeah. How is there this much dust? They also don't do anything. Oh man. I love the fact that someone did a pat on the computer. Did a what on the computer? Oh yeah, Pat. Yeah. Port portable appliance test. I was just like, okay. My office computer has had a pat test done to it. Hmm. The problem is there's a sticker on the case for that test. It's not the same computer. Oh. But I'm like, I've replaced the computer in this case. This test is a mockery. Yeah. Well. The way I know that this computer is safe to use is the fact that it even powers on. Yeah. If there was 240 volts shorted to the case, it wouldn't turn on. It, it comes down to liability, doesn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah. Although I suppose... Don't know. Yeah. No, don't know. Uh, right, this is a GP400, which is smaller than I, rem than I remember. Obviously, I put in a cheap one. Uh. Oh, no. Oops. Anyway. <laughs> I will remove the play. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I can say, yeah. That case is probably going to get chucked out, to be honest. 
Very well then. I guess I'll do something while I'm here. Uh, right, I'm going to quickly check. Based on the dust it needs to blow, it sure does. Uh, let's see, what's the PC build for? Um, it's I'm probably building it up to be a second-hand gaming PC that I shall sell in the shop. Um, I will start building up the motherboard, I guess. So what I'll do, I'm going to swing this round and then I shall go for the bench cam. Graham, use a bottle opener. Yeah. Someone had me covered. If the someone is here, hang on a minute. Uh, someone did actually send in a bottle opener, um, and they sent it, hang on a sec, uh, for those of you who don't watch, uh, who don't follow on Twitter, I wouldn't blame you because I don't post on Twitter very often, uh, bench cam, yeah, so some, someone sent this in, uh, better than pliers, Adam and IT, and they sent a bottle opener via Amazon, so thank you whoever that was. Um, so, that's what screwdrivers are for. A screwdriver to open a bottle, you're brave. Uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I'll go back to the bench cam because we're going to build up this now. And let's have uh, that. There we go. Right. I'm going to build up this motherboard while Caradog is cleaning stuff out. Uh, have I benchmarked the difference between an Arctic MX4 and Arctic MX5? I have not. Um, there will be... A difference, I don't think it'll be a difference that um, anyone really cares about. Um, I don't think it makes any difference unless you're doing extreme cooling, if I'm honest. Right, drop that guy in there. And I'll start out by putting this... Um, I'll start out by putting this G-Skill kit in here. However, I suspect that these modules have problems, but that's why we're going to test them today, because I want to find out. This, uh, these two modules are from a four-module kit, and um, I tested them one by one in the Lianli uh, this week, and uh, two of them worked and are now in the Lianli. These two would not post in my Li in the Lianli, which is an X570 build. Um, so we'll log them and see if they post in this motherboard. Um, if they don't want to work in here, we'll just swap out to this ballistics kit, which will definitely work just so we've got our working computer by the end of the stream. But I'll put that in there for a test. I'm reasonably um, certain we can't use this power supply. Yeah? Oh, God. <laughs> wow, that's proper cack, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we're on, okay, so yeah, the, the GP400A is uh, it's only 288 watts on the 12 volt. So yeah, that's no bueno. Uh, are we going to go and get that VS then? Yeah, might as well. Yeah, I'll grab that. Yeah, all right. So our second choice then we've got there is a we've got a Corsair VS five fifty in uh, one of the other builds, so we'll lob that in there for now. Or shall I just put a new power supply in this thing? I mean, it's going to be a re reasonably nice computer once we're done, aren't we? Isn't it? Because I don't know if I want to sell it with a with a with an ancient VS power supply in it. Caradog shrugs from across the shop. Yeah. Up to you. Yeah. I mean, the VS five fifty will be fine. Yeah. It. It. it yeah. Yeah. So it, yeah, we'll put the VS. I'll double check what the rails are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's put the VS in it. It'll be fine. It's a workhorse. This is what warranties are for. So yeah, use a new one. Yeah, we'll see. Um, well, and Ufa Game Max. Well, I thought it was a GP five hundred in there, and the G or the GP five fifty, one or the other. And that one is okay, TM. You know, they're not. Then you know, they're not high tier power supplies, but they are good budget power supplies. It's uh, you know, they're bronze rated, which means they're not awful. Um, so I was going to use that as just a not awful power supply. However, that one is a GP400A. I clearly bought that just as the cheapest power supply I could buy for a office box that wasn't a fire hazard. Yeah. And by fire hazard, I mean the CIT. And if anyone wants to question that, I can go and get the biscuit tin power supply that we showed off in the last stream. Um, but uh, yes. So, however, there's a there's a, a VS550 in here. That'll be fit for purpose, so we'll stick this in it. Back down that. 
You cable tie this into this case? Yeah, well, uh, last time, what, how much did I do to that? Oh yeah, well, I did a not terrible job with the cable tidying, just because, I don't know, well, this, this computer this computer is in a weird state where we were, we're not really sure what this computer is for or why we have it. You need my little girly hand in there. There we go. Very well. It's fine, I just have a heatsink embedded in my hand now. <laughs> Yeah, is it the XPG? This has got this is the fourth oh gen Intel God. build, and yeah, I I I think this com this computer is getting torn down, isn't it? Because we're going to sell all the bits. Probably. Yeah, um, I think we're going to end up um, eBaying all the bits off of that. Uh, right, I shall carry on putting this. Um, I'm not going to bother putting the the M.2 SSD in this. I don't think. No. No. Um, I think we'll, we'll use the we'll use the bench SSD. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, the so. The second part of the of today's podcast, uh, we're going to build this up, and then we're going to rebuild. Uh, we've got a test SSD that we plug into stuff when we're testing it. That's got um, bench testing suite on it, but that install of Windows needs redoing just because we messed it up a bit, or I'll rephrase that, I screwed it up a bit. Uh, so we're going to reinstall Windows on that, and then we were going to. Um, Caradog is basically just going to go through setting up Benchmate and that kind of thing. Um, so uh, so that's going to be the second part. Uh, after we're done today, I will swap out whatever SSD is in this build with this Samsung 850 Pro that I've got on hand. So it will it will have a decent SSD in it, um, but we're not putting this in today because we're doing a different install of Windows. So that's that. Um, right, okay, so that this just needs a CPU cooler on it then in that case. So I'll start mounting up. Um, I'm not sure, are we gonna, are we gonna sell it with this Cooler Master in there? I don't see why not. We'll test it and find out. Basically. Yeah. Very well. Um, that needs redoing because that's not set up correctly. Quite possibly. Um, so yeah, I blame you entirely for that. Um, so <laughs> this the, uh, rookie mistake on this cooler master here. Um, now set bench cam. Uh, so spot the problem here. You'll notice these legs look a little bit uh, diagonal. The reason for that is. Uh, one of the these plates are both in the same orientation, and um, they it needs to be flipped around. I think anyway. Double check that that's actually the correct part. That might. Yeah, I'm not sure. Because don't forget something that, about that is terribly wrong. Yeah, because don't forget that I just chucked parts together to stop screws getting lost. Yeah, yeah. So um, we need to. I, I need to figure out what's going on with this CPU cooler. Uh, what kind of GPU are you are using later? Um, I'm gonna stick one of my um, I'm gonna stick one of the 1066 gigs in there and sell it with that. Um, I mean, well, yeah, I'm gonna sell it with a 1060 in it. 1060 is still a serviceable graphics card, uh, and I'm selling it as a second-hand build. Um, so if the buyer wants to upgrade that CPU at a later date, they can. I don't really want to put anything else in there just because that's just gonna blow the, the price on it sky high. Uh, and I I'm, I want to price this thing to sell basically. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking to get money for all the other components. Eh. I think the idea of this thing will be that it will actually be a reasonably strong platform for someone to buy a gaming computer and start building it up. So yeah. Uh, let's see, how long for the Young Lads video? Oh yeah, I, I keep, I've been... Yeah, I just haven't gotten to it yet. I've been busy. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Um, soon. Uh, it's not forgotten. I have got this week's video already edited. I think I said that last week, but yeah, I don't know. This week kind of disappeared on me. It was a weird week. So yeah, soon TM. Soon TM. It's in the pipeline. Uh, okay, right. I don't need this at the moment. While I'm chatting, uh, have I, have I ever done the cheap Optiplex build? No, I I don't really have any interest in them. If I'm honest, I know that they're a viable option. I just don't really care. Um, just purely because um, it's a dead end in my opinion. Um, like, you know, sure you can put in a a big graphics card and everything, right? That definitely has to go that way around. 
Yeah. Um, you can put a big graphics card in an Octoplex and you can get a high-end CPU, stick 16 gigs of RAM in it. But, like, then what? You know, I... I, I I guess if you're trying to build your if you're trying to build a gaming PC for for very low cost, it works. But it's an upgrader's dead end. As soon as you want, you know, if you want to put it in a new case, you're going to have a world of hurt because it's a proprietary motherboard and power supply. If you want a bigger power supply, you're going to be in a world of hurt because it's a proprietary case and power supply. It's just they're a dead end. That's the problem. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think if you pick them, if you pick them up for like 40 quid or something and then stick a GPU in it. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, if you pick one up for 40 quid and you stick in a, a, a second-hand GPU, you've got a very cheap gaming PC. But And then it's a case that you can then, whilst you're playing on that, you can have the money to buy a new motherboard, a new CPU, new RAM, That's new power true. supply yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And you have a functioning computer. It, yeah, it gets you a functioning computer today. Yeah. I think just when you build one, you have to go into it knowing that it's a dead end. Yeah. That's the thing. And that's entirely viable, but it's not something that I'm interested in owning. Yeah, as, um, long, as, as, long, as, as long as it's suitably cheap, that's the better. original purchase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's fair. Right. I can go in that. Stick some thermal paste on that. Where, Where is... did the black... Oh, uh, there. Uh, let's see. Uh, bloody MX5. I've just taken the cap off and it's already making a mess. Yeah. <laughs> this VS550 is dramatically better because it does 504 watts. So That'll it do, yeah. So it's like it's not inferring that that's good, it's just a case of dramatically better than what we had. <laughs> yes, indeed. No, I um I assumed that that game max was going to be the 550 or something like that, which and the get the 550 one, it's something like you know, it's like 490 watts on the 12 volt rail or something like that. So it's just like it's fine, basically. Yeah. Um, however, yeah, that 400 watt one at 288 on the 12 volt, that's mm, no, that's a no from me, dog. Uh, right, what way around am I going to put the writing? That way around, I think. Uh, what way around is the fango? Yep, very well. Uh, let's see. An Optiplex is an office PC. Use it like that. I mean, yes, but also the point of it is it is a very cheap way of getting to a gaming PC because you can often find them from office clearances at ridiculously cheap prices. So, you know, it's it's absolutely a viable option. Just not something I'm interested in. Like... I suppose I could make a, you know, you can make a video about it, but man, there's there's a dozen YouTube channels out there that have already done a, how to get a, a gaming PC for a hundred dollars kind of thing, and it's just like, yeah, it's it's been done, it's been it's been done. So yes, uh, start building audio workhorses with lots of CPU and no GPU. Yeah, yeah, I have done one of those before. Uh, let's see, fairly certain the one you've got has got standard PSU connectors. Some of them do, yeah. I am generalizing quite a lot. A lot of the, yeah. It, it depends on, uh, like, it depend if you've got an ATX Optiplex, not one of the small form factor ones, then yeah, it does have a more or less ATX power supply in it. Um, but the motherboard won't be ATX. Uh, or it'll have, or, or it'll have custom headers in it, or something like that. There'll be something annoying about it because Dell, you know, yeah. which is not to say Dell are bad. It's just you don't buy if you want to customize. You don't want to buy a Dell, a HP, or a Lenovo. There will be custom stuff in there, you know, just because that's how they min max the costs of them. So yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not, as I say, I'm not saying that it can't be done. I'm just saying it's, yeah, just keep it in mind, kind of thing. It's not saying that six. It's not saying that it's overly relevant to you. No, yeah, I think that's it. It's just not, yeah, not relevant. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and like again, I'm I'm not trying to dismiss it as a bad idea because you know every now and then I've seen people and like you know there are plenty of videos out there where it's just like they built something up that's got you know, like an i7 in it, and they've just slapped in a second-hand GPU that they managed to snipe for cheap on eBay, and they build 
a respectable performing computer for gaming for a hundred dollars and you're just like damn that's not bad I, yeah. you, you'd be hard pressed to do that any other way yeah however it's a dead end yeah. so yeah uh the newer dells are using the new atx uh 12 volt only yeah yeah they're I, not though they're using 12 volt only power supplies but they are not the 12 volt only spec yeah they are non-specific they are non-spec compliant 12 volt only power supplies oh is that just because they haven't implemented 12 vo yet or they u- they're Dell? using they're using the wrong connectors ah uh, okay because yeah. Dell. Yeah. Basically, the answer to the question is because Dell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Are they doing it because? Yes, because Dell. I'm trying to figure out if this PCH cover has a peel on it or not. It doesn't matter. No, I think the I think the the shiny coating on it is just a little bit scratched. I'll leave it alone. Uh, cool, right? That has cooling on it. That should be an, that's probably enough for a um, for a thing. Are we bench testing? Are we? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Right. Stick that there. Put that there. Uh, good. Right. You're doing that. We've got HDMI down there. Oh yeah. There. I couldn't see the power cable plugged into the power supply, and I saw the RGB light up, and I was like, "Excuse me." <laughs> And I was very confused for a moment. I was like, this computer hasn't been turned on for a fortnight. What, how is there still power in that thing? Magic. Uh, right. There you go. Um, cool. Can I have a graphics card? Yes. Uh, I'll grab the EVGA for now, just because it's a bit smaller and easier to manage while we're on the bench. Yeah. What? Why? Uh, that's the audio. Yes. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Audio circuit. Audio circuit isolation RGB is the crappiest of RGB because you can't see it properly on any system. Like PCH RGB is questionable. Like when you've got RGB on the PCH, this looks really cool until you have a big graphics card that covers it up. The audio circuit, this always gets covered up. So just don't bother, man. If you want to put, if you want good motherboard RGB, then what you want is lots of RGB down the side here and put illumination around the CPU VRMs because that's unique and very few motherboards do that. You wish Fortnite was more commonly used in American and Canadian English? Yeah. However, the, these days, whenever I use the term Fortnite, I have to mean the period of time, not the game. You idiot. Kind of thing. <laughs> it used to be a legitimate thing. Is there a difference between Fortnite and every two weeks? I'm not sure if this is a trick question. No, not specifically, but do you see any difference in the meaning? Because I'm just wondering if there's a colloquial thing as well. Of no, I don't think so, Fortnite yeah. Fortnite being any different to every two weeks because obviously you yeah, can't say f- twice a month because twice a month could be on the first and the second i suppose and then yeah. nothing for 20 days yeah for a fortnight is two weeks yeah that's what when someone says i'll see you in a fortnight that means two weeks yeah so, but when they say i'll see you next week <laughs> you'll turn up a week early okay ow i feel very Wait. called out <laughs> yeah i don't know maybe it was like um like I, I grew up with with separated parents, and for me, I would I I spent uh, every I I spent every other weekend at my dad's house. So, uh, you know, I knew this term as a child often because we would see him in a fortnight. You know, so it was kind of a so I actually used the term legitimately a lot. Whereas I feel like not many people actually say fortnight very often. Whereas for me, I, I kind of grew up with the term. Because I because I had things that were on a two week schedule. Have you ever heard of tea being described as a bit fortnight? No. Oh, because it's too weak. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Oh. You stay up all night coming up with that one, or did you steal it? <laughs> no, that was something someone in my office told me. <laughs> I'm actually angry about that. So very much just went, oh, this week's a, this this tease a bit of Fortnite. Yeah. I was like, what? 
It's too weak. Yeah, it's oh, too weak. God. Oh. <laughs> on the assumption that Katrina isn't here right now, we need to say that to Katrina later on. I think she'll appreciate <laughs> that one. <laughs> What's up, Paul Daniels? How you doing? What's the deal with McDonald's not accepting half dozen or dozen? I don't know. Do they not? So, yeah. Uh, Fortnite is 14 nights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I hadn't made that connection. I don't know what I thought it meant. But yeah, I'd never made that connection before. Which I guess could argue be me could arguably mean in fifteen days' time. Why are you like this? <laughs> I'm gonna put in my, my power button widget so we can turn this thing on. I'm gonna put my dongle in it. Why are you like this? <laughs> <laughs> right, I put in my thing. Excellent. Um, you probably want capture. Or is this just plugged into a monitor, or do you... that should be plugged into the uh, that should be plugged into the um, the thing, which I excellent. Uh, let's see, where do we let's go to let's go to live gamer and uh, XR one. There it is. I was going to say I'm sure we've got to capture this. Oh no, you just don't get to see me now. Hang on a sec. Let's go. Ooh, mm. I'll put that down. Let's go. Ha 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 ha. There we go. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Bam. It's on. It's just really quiet. That graphics card fan sounds very poorly. It stopped, but it turned over and it went... Did you hear it just then? No. So, it went... I, <laughs> so I can only hear the power supply fan. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to reinitialize that. I'm going to double check that it's even plugged into that. It is. Oh, we're stuck on... We're stuck on... C oh, we're stuck on DRAM diagnostics. This RAM kit's bollocks. I'm calling that now. This is a no. Oh, it is. Posting. Yeah, we're we're no posting, and I think it's because this this RAM kit is bollocksed. Maybe. Uh, the question of the day: Why are you like this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. This PC is boring. Nothing blew up so far. Why? Why are you like this floor lamp? <laughs> uh, okay. Are you just going to try one module? Yeah. I'll let you do the thing. Other one. Uh, I'm going to grab... Would you like a cider? Sure. It is that time of the stream. We are nearly an hour in. Oh, the graphics card spooled up that time. We're still stuck on DRAM, though. We're power cycling. VGA. Is that going to post? I think it might be. Boop. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we just had a post. I saw Aorus. Aorus or Aorus? No, Aorus. Aorus. Very well. The O is silent. Um, what's... Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, because it's Aorus. Yeah. Oh, is it Aorus? I don't know. No, th that was... Oh, never mind. I was like, the A, because the O is silent. So it's Aorus. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm, I'm because it then makes the sound at the front, A-U. Aorus. I'm I'm stuck halfway between because this trying hurts. Yeah. I'm trying to decode I'm trying to decode <laughs> this joke at the same time as going, why is that booting? Oh yes, okay, that's because it's got our SSD connected to it. Because for a minute I was like, is this some rando SSD that might have customer data on it? And I was like, no, it's okay. We're okay. Okay. I'm gonna go and get the boot. <laughs> I'm starting drinking. I am entirely too sober for this. Unless we fi suddenly find out that that slot's broken. No idea. Eh. I mean, you say that. Uh, that's... N yeah, maybe. It's some gra... Uh, I mean, also, it's not a valid... Oh, it should boot with it in any slot, shouldn't it? Like... A single stick should. Yeah, technically it's not a valid config. It should be in slot number two, but it should work in any single slot, shouldn't it? What's that doing at the moment? That's stuck on DRAM at the moment. Any single slot should work. Yeah. I'm going to utilize our brand new bottle opener. And yes, we're on the Meon today. Today we were on the Brown Trout, uh, which is the medium dry. So uh, this will be, um, yeah, Brown Trout. Yes. Ah. 
I don't think it's happy. No. Eh. Eh. One of them. New bottle opener. Yeah. We're trying to think of ways to annoy people with this new bottle opener. I mean, it's this is a mounted bottle opener. It's designed to be screwed into a, a, a bar or something. So what we're thinking of doing for the time being is just using it handheld. Because why are we like this? <laughs> so Are these the same? They are. Yeah. They are both brown trouts. Very nice. Brown trout. A copper hued refreshing cider. Lightly spa sparkling with a long, medium dry finish. Very well. Excellent. Ooh. That's that's very distinctive compared to last week's one. Yeah. I dig it. I tell you what doesn't dig it is this PC, which is not booting. What, what are we doing now? Are we in slot two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's power cycling again. I just saw it go from CPU to DRAM. I think it might be that module. Yeah. So the other one did post then. Very well. I will give this kit one more test. I'll give this kit one last test in the Corsair uh, later today or Tuesday or whenever I can be bothered um, just to confirm it because um, yeah just to find out um, but yeah it looks like we're switching to our backup kit for the actual build power cycle on DRAM What's the cheapest cider you can get in the UK? Um, probably just store brand or maybe White Lightning. Um, but it's uh, buying the cheapest cider on the shelf. It's a lot like buying instant coffee. It's not really coffee. It It's a drink. It's a coffee flavored drink, but it's not coffee. Uh, same thing goes with cheap cider. Um, so yeah, for most cheap stuff, a lot of people just go Strongbow, but Strongbow is terrible. Mm. Sulfites and cider? I don't know, actually. This one probably... Sometimes. Oh, this one does have... Yeah, this one has sulfites in. I'd imagine that most stuff does. Yeah, I was going to say... Why any, wouldn't you? Yeah, any production cider will probably have sulfites in for freshness. Uh, if, in order to not get sulfites, you probably need to get it fresh from the brewery. Um, but if it you, will last 12 hours. I was about to say, but if you're buying it fresh from a brewery with no sulfites in, you need to drink it within a, within a day or so. Otherwise, it'll go off. So... Hmm. Oh, indeed, they are sulfites, not sulfates. Is there? Oh, what's the difference? I thought they were sulfates. I I didn't know sulfates and sulfites are different things. Yes. Oh, oh, are we, are we pronouncing Sulf it wrong? Sulfates. Sulfates will mean that there is an oxygen group somewhere, and sulfites will be mm, something else that I cannot remember. Very well. No, uh, uh, chemistry from 12 years ago has failed me. Chat, what's the difference between sulfates and sulfites? Let us educate us. Uh, uh, we could Google it, or we could just ask you guys to Google it. This, this is, is still not posting. Yeah, yeah this is kill. Um, I'm also not sure if this motherboard is particularly good for testing RAM in. Uh, no. Only because it doesn't seem to like posting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a Gigabyte B450. Um, Gigabyte's B450 boards were not their finest hour. I think we can agree. Did we buy our update this B450 last time we were fiddling with it? The B450 also just wasn't... Yeah, well, yeah, the B450 itself hours. was not, yeah. Um, although, based on what I've heard, just Gigabyte's B450 boards in general weren't great. Like, the, the B450 Aorus M was just not a good motherboard because it had a garbage BIOS and was a bit air eh, It was okay. The hardware was, was okay. Um, I think it was passable hardware, um, but yeah, the BIOS in it was garbage. Um, right, okay, let's lob the, this kit in so we can actually get to working. So we'll post-test this one more time and just be like, good, this posts reliably, and then we'll stick it all in the case. 
Uh, power, please. Thank you. Right, so we're expecting this to start now. It's probably going to power cycle a couple of times while it um, ram trains. That is quite RGB, isn't yes, it? Yes, this ballistics Good is Lord. aggressively RGB. Here comes the RGB cam. It goes blah. Wow. And let's go back to there. Very good. Ta-da! All right, we have booted up. Uh, Groovy. All right, let's lob all this in a case then, shall we? Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll lob that all in a case, then we're gonna reinstall Windows on this SSD and set up a new bench testing setup. I think so. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, aha, we have an answer. Goofy balls are fired. Uh, SO32 is sulfate and SO22 is sulfite. Where, where is Goofy balls? Uh, sulfates yeah. or sulfites are compounds that contain the sulfite ion or the sulfate uh, 4 ion from its correct system of name. So 3 sulfite is uh, uh, nitrates and nitrites. Okay. Th this ah, is yes, yes. Yeah. 3 versus 2 oxy. Yes. Oh, yeah, that was it. Okay. Is there any difference between when they're in a drink or is it... No, no, no. I was purely looking at it from a chemistry thing. Hmm. Because because I thought it was sulfates that were in drinks okay, and stuff. Okay, yes. The preservative, it's actually sulfites. But it's sulfites. And I just went, oh. Yeah. They're different. Very, very they are not what I thought they were. Yeah. It looks like Caradog is being partially redacted. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea what I'm doing in yeah. this box. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just pulling on beads. <laughs> but you and I both know what's going on here. <laughs> Let's build a PC, shall we? <laughs> have I tried homemade cider? I've not tried homemade cider per se. I have had fresh cider from the brewery before. <clears throat> I don't I'm not super into the freshest of the fresh. I just like Damn it. I just like like craft cider, so you know, just fresh cider. Uh, right, is that all? Yeah, that's all good. Right, uh, I'll put that back here. Right, uh, did you dust out the NZXT case? No. Okay, right, I shall hang on a sec. Squat. Right. Lift. Right. I'm going to have a quick nosy in here just to see what we're doing with this. So, this case has got some RGB left in it. It's still got an RGB strip in it and an RGB fan. Um, I don't have the RGB controller for these though, so I might remove them. Actually, I think I've got a spare RGB controller for an NZXT case. Uh, we'll leave the RGB in there for now. I'm not gonna get it now on stream because I'm not sure where it is and I'm not sure what condition it's in, uh, but I've got a second one somewhere, so yeah. We'll build this up with the RGB in there, but just leave it disconnected for the time being, because uh, we don't have a controller for it. But I'm fairly certain that I possess a controller that I can put in this. I don't know why I didn't put it back in there last time. Maybe just because I didn't know what I was doing with this case. Fine. Okay, right. So I'm going to grab a cloth and just wipe this down. This is mostly just surface dust, and that'll just wipe off. So I'll quickly do that now. Very well. Are we going in fan side up? Uh, yes, as is my preference. All right. Uh... It looks like these cables had an accident. Uh, yes, I did some butchery on these cables to, uh, um, because NZXT have two different standards of RGB, because fuck you. Oh, we, no. Within the uh, within the NZXT ecosystems, there are ecosystems that are technically not compatible with each other, but it is possible to make them work with each other. I will not elaborate on this because we're just not going there. <laughs> is that long enough? Yeah. Right. Um... Am I going to put... Yeah, I should put some... I'll probably put some front fans in there. Alright, so I'm going to go... Uh, <coughs> Very well. Huh. 
<laughs> is my favourite film as well. <laughs> I understood that reference, but no one else will. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> I see. <laughs> is my mother-in-law's name too. Hello, fellow express owl. <laughs> I am also an express owl. I do much hooting. <laughs> We're just... Anyone who has played A Hat in Time will understand this joke. If you haven't played A Hat in Time, you're probably wondering what the hell we're talking about. <laughs> right, Hat in Time. The, the, the crows are the best characters in A Hat in Time. Uh, right, let's see. Um, reading through. Okay, people are talking about Windows 3.1. I'm not sure why, and I'm a bit scared to scroll back far enough. So, yeah. Your PC is a H700. Uh, all right, case probably wouldn't buy it again. Yeah, the H700 suffers less because it's got it's bigger and has just more intake. But the H, the H500 just has got no intake on it, uh, and it works. I was running I was running one of these with a 3070 in it, um, and it's fine. It's just your cooling system is working harder than it needs to. So it's a case you know this case got a lot of hate for its cooling. And that was justified because it was designed just before the airflow meta came in. And the airflow ca meta came in just as this case was coming out. And so it was kind of dead on arrival. And it got, uh, and it immediately started getting compared to all of the airflow cases uh, against which it performed very poorly. Um, so, however, as a case, it's fine, basically. Um, but yeah, I, however, was going to high-end hardware, and if you start putting in top-end hardware, in this case, you will start having cooling problems. Um, it's gonna work, but your fans are gonna be going like the clappers all the time. What are you looking for? Uh, the cable clappers. They cannot see them. For I am blind. There. Ah, yes. My cabbages! <laughs> so, yes. NZXT helps you catch. Let's help you catch fire for the H1. Yeah, yeah. That was unfortunately quite a poor look. Yes, that was. It was just badly handled. It was a good demonstration on how not to do things. Yeah, like the the actual fault was not massively egregious. It was just a design fault, uh, and as NZ uh, as Fractal proved. It's a design fault that anyone could have made. The issue was the fact that they tried to downplay it and cover it and not and say it wasn't a big deal when what they should have done was just say, that's a design fault, we're going to issue a, a repair for it. And like, I feel bad for them because they probably had a warehouse full of faulty cases which they would need to unpack and recondition. But that's what you gotta do when there's a fault in your manufacturing. They should have just they, they just needed to suck it up. Which is exactly what Fractal did. Fractal were just like, we screwed up. Here's a replacement part. Yeah. It's free. And we, like, they had out, they, Fractal had out the replacement fan hub. I think I had mine in seven days. Yeah. Uh, and that was on a brand new case. I, I filled out the form and seven days later, I had the replacement part. That, you know, it was just, yeah. Although, to be honest, if Fractal had screwed that up, they would have deserved even worse. Why thinking? does this need to be twice the length of the case? For cable tidying purposes. It makes more cable tidying requirement. Well, the point is it can go along and down and like when you're going along and down and doing dog legs and stuff like that, you need a lot of thing. If you're going as the crow flies, sure, but... I'm like, I, I, I don't understand how I'm supposed to hide this. It's better too long than too short. I guess. Mm. I would just expect this in a case that was... Hmm. Well, it probably is the same top panel as the H700, so you might actually be closer to the truth than you'd imagine. What are you? You are good audio. The S340 Elite had good airflow. I'm not sure if sarcasm or not. The S340 Elite was a nice case. I was, I was really, I was this close to buying an S340 Elite, um, and then this came out, and I bought this instead. But yeah. Do, do, do. Gosh, shush, Mike White. <laughs> hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Right. Power supply is in. Oops. I'm going to check if we need to move any standoffs for our motherboard. Right, put that up there. Probably not. I only need two screws. Big sigh. A big sigh. Okay. Uh, nope. All of our standoffs are in the correct location already, so that's going to drop right in. Right. Uh, okay. Are we in a position where we can go horizontal? Or are you still doing a bit more tidying? Um, also, we need some front fans for this. I'm going to go and rummage and find a pair of... I probably got the original NZXT airflow fans that would have come with this. There's one there. Yeah, I'm sure I've got another one of those. I'm going to quickly grab it. You require one more of these. You must construct additional pylons. Airflow fan to go on the front, so I will start doing that. This case has a removable front bracket that comes out ah, thusly. So the idea is you can remove this front bracket and now you can bolt your, your water cooler and fans up to it and then it just slides back in again. This is actually a really... The airflow is the deal breaker with this case. Um, this is a really good case except for the airflow. And that's why I've got such a love-hate relationship with NZXT um, over this, is that it was genuinely a really nice case, but the airflow was rubbish. It's such a pity. Such a pity. All right, let's put that in there. I'm going to need to find some self-tappers. Tapper, tapper, tapper. All right, can you move a bit to the left so I've got some more space over here? Thank you. Uh, and a fan. And I need that. Let's see. All right, what's going on in chat? Does the, does the H500 have Type-C on the front? No, the H500 doesn't. Uh, there is, there are newer versions of the case. I think the H510 or the H510 Elite have Type C on them. Uh, the newer revisions of this case. Uh, this is the H500i, which is the original design uh, with the RGB controller, or actually the smart device, which is the notorious smart device that um, Gigabyte uh, that. Gamers Nexus slammed the smart device for doing nothing. However, they are correct is that its smart features do nothing, but the bit that they didn't acknowledge was the fact that it was still a perfectly functional RGB and fan controller, which itself still has value. Um, so, yeah, that was a thing. Uh, however, no, this particular one does not have Type-C on it. I don't think this motherboard does either, though, so that doesn't actually matter. Uh, for Caradog's benefit, Parmo, or Teesside Parmesan, is a dish originating in Middlesbrough. It consists of breaded cutlet of chicken and pork topped with a white uh, bechamel, 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 sauce and cheese. Bechamel. Good. Why, good. What, why was this relevant to you? Oh, because, because, hold on. Okay. I, now, I now must read messages in another location to attempt to gain contact. All oh, right, I got no idea what you're on Mr. about, Mike. <laughs> what Palmo? I'm still confused. I'm still confused. There are still zero contacts. <laughs> Why do we need to know this? Did Time for a the Dremel. Right. S -S if I had I was actually going to do that, Marcel. Um I was actually what? going to um I was actually look investigating dremeling this case uh, to do an airflow mod on it. Um but then I bought the fractal and part of me, I part of me is just like, oh, maybe oh. I shouldn't sell this case, and I should oh. mod it. But the other part of me is just like, 
I'm not going to get around to it. I'm just going to sell it. So, what are you owing about? The front USB is not where I thought it was. Oh, okay. That's why I was like, oh. Oh! Oh. <laughs> oh. I seem to be in quite a pickle indeed. Can you plug that in, or do we need to remove the fans first? Uh, I can probably get that in. Uh, let's swap places a sec. Okay. Change places! Also, are we... Oh yeah, no, we, we are high enough. Yep. I was going to say, we're not quite in. Yeah, oh, for a moment, I thought the VRM heat sinks weren't going to clear the fan, but yeah, uh, they will get there. Very good. Ooh, can we get any more slack on that? Ooh, no. Cider by the two and a half litre container. It kind of sounds like it's going to be red diesel. <laughs> you can get... Um... Now, is it cheaper to, to buy red diesel or is it cheaper to buy cider? I think you can buy uh, <laughs> Old Rosie in like five litre jugs. Glass jugs? Yeah. They're attempting to be somewhat classy. Yes. <laughs> um, I think I need some pliers or something. Just to... From my very limited experience with this case, this case is not nice to build in. It's the, the fan is in the way. I think it might be faster to remove the fan, if I'm honest. Yeah, I'm going to take the fan out. By the, time I've, by the time I've messed about and managed to get this cable in, I could have taken the fan out and had an easy time putting it in. And in fact, I'm going to remove this fan anyway, because I'll probably keep this one. And um, and sell it. Uh, no, actually, I should. I'll, I'll sell it with both. Maybe I don't know. I need to see okay. what I, I. Yeah, I need to wait and see what RGB options I have. Um, I think I think the 140 mil fan is the problem child for the RGB setup in this. So I might sell it without that just to make sure um, that everything works. Oh, everything's trapped around the back. Uh, oh, no, it's daisy chains. That's why. Okay, how's that? Lego. Oh, God. Two, two and a half litres of cider for four pounds. God, that's dangerous. Oh, there. Also, just this fan is in, in, in the way of getting in the I.O. Um... The entire case is just in the way of actually using the case. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going <laughs> to... There is little to defend the fact that this case is far too tetris for a full ATX case. It is a very small ATX case, though. This thing is only slightly bigger than a 220T. Um, True. So, you know, it is a very compact ATX case, which, again, is one of the reasons why I liked it, because... This is a very, very space-efficient case. But when you have a very space-efficient case, you will end up with this problem. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. is That's only a problem while you're building it. Once it's built, you're laughing. Right, let's pull all these fans out, and I'll put them back in afterwards. You have a thing here go. as well. Can you free that? Yes. Have, a, have an additional thing. Chars. Oh my days. But yes, my point. <laughs> well, also, we don't quite have enough slack on this CPU power cable. It can go in. It's just a tricky one. It is somewhat awkward. Well, there is at least Type-C on the back of this board. Oh, that's not bad for a B450. Yeah. It'll be alright. I think this was probably early Type C, and then they briefly went through a phase of not bothering, and then it came back again. Yeah, I could understand not bothering with like an A320 board, and just not having Type C on that. Because an A320 board you're trying to sell for 40 quid. Yeah.
Okay. <laughs> That's sometimes what you have to do. Stop, take a breath, and try again. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> yeah, or just stop. <laughs> also, what is this, and why was it embedded in my hand? Uh, that is a razor blade. Do not embed that in your hand. Mm. It's for cutting things. <laughs> What's going on in chat, Caradog? Because... I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stomp off camera in a minute. Okay, I was gonna say, do, do we do we need bench cam edition? Just not only can you hear the fumbling, you can watch someone else fumble as well. <laughs> no. Mm. Mm. <laughs> do I want to take the power supply out? I can do it. This is one of those ones where oh I'm just like, God. how is it not going in? How is this happening? Oh boy. Sleepwalker says, Birmingham Cider, Wobbly Bob, £6 a pint, 9.8% proof. 9.8? Bloody hell. I love that Wobbly Bob. <laughs> yes. Oh, what was, what was the one from Piddle? There was something along those lines as well. I can't remember. Ringwood has Tanglefoot, which is in a similar vein. After drinking a couple of pints of this, your feet will feel as though they are tangled. <laughs> huh, blob. What? Is £214 a good price for ML fans? Oh, more than one. Okay. Three, three 140s and three 360s. I mean... What? I... <sighs> three 360s? Or is that... Three, three 120s, three I would imagine that is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Six fans. £214. I mean, that seems like a lot of money. What's the breakdown of that on a per fan basis? That's the question. Um, I mean, for premium fans, I'm expecting to pay 15 quid a fan second hand. Oh, it's more than £20 a fan. Yeah, then no. Um, not uh, like if you're if they're like QL fans or something, so they're like the quad light loops. Those are expensive because they've got LEDs out the wazoo, and that makes them expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for for just bog standard ML fans, I would not be paying for non RGB MLs. I wouldn't be paying more than ten quid a fan, quite frankly. Yeah. Like if you're paying twenty pound a fan. Then I expect those to be um, I expect those to be uh, fancy RGB, or I expect them to be Noctua. Yeah. All right, I've I've done it. I'm sorry, everyone, but I have done it. Congratulations. <sighs> I feel the immense relief. This, now I'm going to turn around and find that all of the grounding tabs are jammed into all of the USB ports. <laughs> Luckily, it's a pre-mounted backplate. Oh, yes, it is, isn't it? So that cannot be a situation. I'm still going to check. <laughs> Good. All right. Did it. Right, I'm going to stick a screw in there. Uh, have we got any Good. motherboard screws yet? No. All right. Uh... I'm sure you have... Pots of them. I do. Here is a pot. Beans. Beans. <laughs> uh, right, I don't know if these need to be um, metric or imperial. That feels like a metric to me. Can we get the metric, boys? I require the other screws. And here is my box of 5,000. Especially supplied by eBay. Uh, just collected over time. Right. One. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Right, uh. am I going to go all in? Yeah, I may as well put all the screws in now. I was going to wait just so I could start plugging in more cables, but um, the, the, the tough boy is done now. That doesn't feel right at all. Something wrong with that header. Chapel head pegs? Chapel hat pegs? What? 
I'm missing context, I feel. That then again, it's fine. Like, so. I think. Oh. It may not be forthcoming. I think oh. I have mixed. I think I've got mixed standoffs in this, but I can't understand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's not. However, I'm just like, why would there be mixed standoffs in this, though? To annoy yourself in the future. Apparently, yeah, because there's bloody Imperials on the bottom row. <laughs> why, though? <laughs> okay. Um, Possibly because you thought the case was Imperials? Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> fine. <laughs> whatever, too late now, not changing anything. No, I'm I'm not I'm not gonna bother. However, I will at least use different heads on the Imperials so if anyone looks they can be like, oh, there's different screws along the bottom, make a note of that. Why are they all different? Yeah. However, it'll just be two of them. The bottom left is gonna be metric, you watch. No, it's Imperial as well, we're fine. Hey. Okay. Unless unless it yeah, just had a layout of um, you know, just the CPU socket ones, effectively. Yeah, that's very confusing. Yeah, that's that's weird because that that's the thing. Like when I built this, I would have used all the stuff that came with the case. I wouldn't have used any spare parts. So why were the extra? That implies that the extra standoffs that came with the case were. Oh no, that's a bloody imperial as well. What the hell is going on here? Unless at some point I've just cross-threaded all of these standoffs and shredded them. <laughs> Everything is awful. It is, apparently. Alright, let's try a bloody Imperial in that as well. Try again. Yeah, okay. Alright, last one. What are you going to be? <laughs> Dave Weldon. Graham is giving his younger self a talking to. Yes. No, that's a flipping Imperial as well. So... The the layout of the standoffs in this case doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to which ones are metric and imperial. Unless they're all imperial. Or they were all metric. Or... Yeah, I possibly they were all metric and I've just shredded the heads on them at some point. Uh, the, the threads, sorry. But yeah, we've got bottom row is imperial, middle row is metric, and the top row is two imperials and one metric. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, and I don't care. Let's finish building a PC. <laughs> right, okay, that's in there. Uh, right, let's put this up right and wire it in. Welcome to this week's episode of Let's Build Computers, where Graham loses his mind. Apparently so. <laughs> uh, can we swap bottles so I can... Bottle. Thank you all. You believe you have mixed standoffs in your H440? Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, uh, and yeah, I don't know. Damn it, it's a XT. <laughs> so I saw AJ's one jam fan screws in all of them. <laughs> Just self tap. Oh, that's terrible. Thankfully, that would absolutely not be possible. But I appreciate the with humor. With sufficient talk. Yeah, not with that attitude, yeah. <laughs> with sufficient talk, anything is possible. Did you find your hockey tape? Uh, yes, I did. It's actually there. So, uh, yeah, we could wrap that. Yeah. Uh, right. Come on there. Who is this Mick standoff? <laughs> no! <laughs> no! Oh, I hate it when the USB 3 header is at the bottom. There's no I mean, nice way to do that. To be honest, isn't the statement just "I hate the USB three header"? Yeah, actually, that's a that's a reasonable thing to say. I'm saddened the Type C is as large as it is. Yeah, the Type C header just doesn't seem to be. I'm surprised in a way that the Type C header wasn't just a Type C port, and you plugged in a Type C extension cable effectively. Yeah, I guess. Looks then it would also mean that you could just use it on a bench. Yeah. Unless the header is cheaper to make than the port. 
I guess. Yeah. Okay, that goes that. That's RGB. That is front audio. Go over the top with that one. Be gone with you and stay out of the way. Are there any cases that have cable tidy channels all the way along the top? So you can do that across the top and down? I don't think so, but cable tidy channels, I've yet to see any that are actually useful. Well, not necessarily like, channels, but like little loops for you to cable tie Yeah, into. it's quite common to find them along, to find loops along the top of cases. Uh, a lot of modern cases, they'll just put loops everywhere. Like even in really bizarre places, just so whatever you're trying to do, there'll be a loop there. Oh, I guess, um, yeah. So yeah. But ah. again, the, the cable tidying channels were another selling point of this case. Uh, and I really wanted to use them properly as intended to do a proper cable pornography job. Mm. But again, they're just not effective. It's just They just don't really work as intended because nine times out of 10, you will end up like, they, when they don't work, people will be like, oh, that's an edge case. But well, in that case, they're all edge cases then. Yeah. Because I've yet to build a PC in a case with cable channels where I've found that the cable channels were just not a hindrance. Yeah. Like I've got I've got one of the channels removed from this case because it was actually just actively in the way. Mm. And I was like, this is the opposite of helpful. Quite literally. Yeah. Yes. Which, which is a bummer because, yeah, I think they're a great idea, but they just never seem to work as they are envisioned. Uh, all right, that lives there now. <laughs> this this lives here. This is this is it. Yeah. All right, that's. I was I was yes stuffing the. What's that? That is here. front panel. Bloody hell, that seems a bit short. What's going on with you? I pulled a lot of slack through. Oh top, yeah. Just so it didn't get in the way and crushed. Yes. I was very confused for a moment. I was like, how is the front panel header that short? How is the front panel header half the length of the case? Yeah. And then less. Good evening, page or afternoon. Good time of day. Ah. Ugh. Fit. Okay, right, that's going there. And that's coming up there. One nice thing about this case, it has a unified header for the front panel. It until, just plugs in. Until you own an Asus board. Yes. And then in actual fact, you're shorting LEDs out or something. What is... Oh, yeah, there's no reset button on this. Yeah. For a minute, I was like, why is it missing half the pins? But, yeah, there's not actually a lot going on there. All right, I can go there. It is time zone o'clock. Indeed, it is, Paige. Eh. Hello, Pago. All right. Uh... Right, okay, I'm nearly there with the boring cable tidying bit, and then we can go it back to It sounds like the cable tidying turned into a stuff and crush. Uh, it's mainly where I'm trying to avoid undoing um, Velcro tiebacks. So I'm trying to thread things into existing places. However, there is a bit of stuffing and crushing going on. But isn't there always with cable tidying? Maybe. Don't forget. Right. That's RGB, so that can stay loose. Where do these come through? Uh, one of these holes here and here, basically. Um, uh, yeah, and then go for the low one as well. Yeah. There we go. Does that go on there? Yes. Yep, you're doing the right and then thing. Like that. Yeah. And yeah, you, you might need to jiggle it to get the holes to line up. I cannot jiggle. Okay, I'll get it. Not without being very much in your space. Yeah. Hello, I have come to be your friend. Hello there. <laughs> <laughs> now right. this is pod racing. Wait. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so, um, am I going to lob these... Um, I won't put the RGB fans in for now. Um, yeah, just I, wait until you yeah. know you've actually got the controller. Yeah. So you might just chuck what normal. That's right. So we've got a pair of NZXT RGB fans here, and there is some extra RGB wiring. However, we're still we're missing the controller. As I mentioned earlier on, I'm fairly certain I've got a an RGB controller for this case, but I don't know where it is, so I'm not going to grab it now. 
Uh, I will find it off stream and we'll put, um, we've got a 140 mil fan for the top and a 120 for the back. And that really completes this case. Um, the, in order to make the airflow not garbage on this, you go negative air pressure and you put in two exhaust fans and either remove or slow down the intake. Um, the downside of that is that you get a lot of dust ingress through the back, but it is what it is. Um, however, we don't need those for this system to work, so we're just going to make it go, and then we can get to the software part of today. Um, how are we doing for time? We are 135. Uh, yeah, so we, we want to yes. get to software now, don't we? So I'm just going to get everything plugged in now, and we'll boot this thing up. Um, I'll probably, as I say, I'll be doing some more tinkering with this thing offline. There's bits that need to change anyway before we uh, before it actually goes on sale. So, uh, right, what what fan options do we have? Um, I've got one up the top left, and I've got. Oh, one at the back there. Not a lot. Uh, I'll just plug into the sys fan headers for the time being, just again to to get it to get it up and running. I, I don't know if I'm going to reach actually. Options? Top left and middle, yeah. Uh, there's CPU optional as well. Oh, there's but... one at the bottom. Oh, is there? Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, I'll use that one then in that case. All right. Get you into that. Closer. Bam, bam. Bam, and then that's going down the bottom. And again, just stuffing cables into places now. Yes. Fit. Oh, yeah, there's the low one. Yeah, didn't spot that. All Graham's right. face as a replacement for the Alvarez logo at the start. <laughs> I'm, I was. Is this is this you in in? Well, you know, from, so I'm just kind of going. Ah! I was I was just deliberating. I was like, am I going to try and do an impersonation of the Alvarez logo? And I was like, I don't think I can pull that off. <laughs> right, uh, there's the back panel. That needs its. Oh, the filter on that isn't too. Yeah, it wants a clean filter anyway. But another time. Let's get this thing started. Let's get this party started on a Saturday night. Yes. All right. I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure with some minor BIOS modding, you could, in fact, have your face as your startup image. Yes. <laughs> this will be excellent use of Lead Farmer's time. I mean, I'm pretty certain he's volunteering. Oh yeah. There we <laughs> Uh, okay, right. Ta. Insert the GPU. Uh, do you want to get the? Um, uh, do you want to get bench cam ready just so we can show people what we've put together? Eh. And uh, I need a screw. That should probably do it. Not these screws. Are you going to shimmy this way slightly? I will in a moment, yeah. And we can just go, there we go. Yeah, so we've got a bit of ketchup and mustard going on with the uh, power supply. Um, I will do some work with that off camera with the stick tape, I think. But I'm not going to go mad on it just because it's not worth it with this power supply. Okay. All right, smash it. Uh, bench cam one, you want? But now the text is the correct way up. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's just. Uh, yeah, that kind of works. Okay. Oh, there we go. That one's much easier to align, like drastically <laughs> easier to align. There we go. Oh my god, look how much dust is on that rear fan uh, thing. Look how little dust there is now. There we go. Okay. Right. That's that. And where's the window? It's over there. <coughs> That's Don't not a window from this one. Don't uh, shut it up. Oh, yeah, we need we to. We need an SSD. Yes, we do. Where is the side, the, the window, though? I don't know. 
Oh, Hopefully it's, it's down there. there. Okay, yes. Yeah, it does exist. Good. Uh, right, SSD. Okay, right. Yes. I wish you... Why didn't you tell me this before I put the back panel on? Because I was clever and I'd put a SATA power through there. Oh. But um, then you shuffled the cables, apparently. So it is no longer through there. I can't help but feel that this is somehow your fault. I mean, probably. Trying to align the camera where it's not being blinded by the light. All right, that's where it lives now. Uh, okay, right. And uh, also, my, my face is the boot. No, we're not doing that on this motherboard. <laughs> we should do that on... We should do that on our board that we've got in the shop that we're not going to sell for whatever reason. No, no, no. You should absolutely do it on a board that you are going to sell. <laughs> <laughs> no. Just put it on the um, X Deb, um, whatever the hell this one is. Gigabyte GA Z97X Gaming something. That one. <laughs> oh, did I just. That just made a very unpleasant noise. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> what? I, 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 I fumbled the connector and now it rattles, but I don't understand what's broken. No, neither do I, but let's find out. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Might have just broken an SSD. It's it's not an important SSD, thankfully. But I I I fumbled. I think we're going to find a loose NAND chip in there. That's what that sounds like to me. Heat it up. <laughs> oh no! Heat gun the core. Rehot GPU, bro. Rehot GPU. Survey says. Oh, okay, that's fine. What's oh, it's like a spacer or something. Okay, that's it's okay. It's the bit that goes in the back. Yeah, yeah. that's what I, that does. That fit back in, or do we care? I mean, oh, it's oh, because it, there's a yeah, it's double sided thing. taped. Yeah, all right, that's that's okay. That sounded a lot worse. Is it that way? I was like, I couldn't understand how I could have broken any chips off from the outside, but yeah. Yeah, I think it goes like that. All right, that'll do. Whatever. All right. Ugh. As long as the connector goes in, that's all that really. It needs matters. to go in the oven now. <laughs> Turns out everything was fine. We're okay. We're okay. It was a near miss. Oh dear. Where's my? I mean, it would be fine because then we can just swap to that Corsair SSD. Sorry, not Corsair. That crucial two fifty mm. gig. Mm. <laughs> that's a good point. Which is probably better, to be honest. These things are archaic. Yes, but we're using this one specifically because it's red. Yes, it's distinctive. And it will not yeah. get mixed up with yes, the this other is SSDs true. that you actually use to upgrade people's computers. Yes, there are so many MX500s lying around in this shop that I, I literally have to double take every single one to be like, is this actually mine or has this come out of something? Because you're not going to stick this yeah. in a clamp PC. It's Corsair Force GT. Has this got a manufacturing date on it? No, Maybe. can't I can't see one. It's got a part number, no, but no. no. I don't know. But yes, I think this is um, it's approximately old. It's metal. They don't make them like this anymore. Right, I'll try and plug it in without completely destroying it this time. I did it. Are you proud of me? Always. Right, that's going in there. Just stuff it all in the back there. Absolutely. All right, of success. Pac-Man, uh, Pac-Man. Good. Post. Post. <laughs> Post. Stop making obscure jokes that no one will understand. <laughs> It was only because it came into my head and was just like, oh yes. Cat. <laughs> Cat. He's a postman, 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 postman. Red van, red van. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, Beans. We, we built a PC. Uh, good, it did turn on.
for a moment it didn't the the power light didn't come on and i was like oh it didn't work <laughs> the computer it's dead well you can see the rgb ram doing the thing so that that's it's, that's it's, occurring it's, it's, oh apparently that's not my cider which one did you pick up now this one yeah no we swapped yeah this one yeah, it's fine we we swapped bottles earlier on i hope mm. well because this one has less in yeah no we did oh that's the cam link uh you want Wait, to go I want to... to do that yes there we go yeah however we do actually need to set up a scene so we've got full screen well what do, what do we want do we want full screen software sure yeah um yeah let's do that so uh, That's fine. let's go to cam link um i should be doing this on studio mode but that would be sensible so just listen to the sultry sound of my voice while i put in the voice. uh capture here voice this is my sultry voice okay there we go now there's something on the screen again and uh to so turn that off and then turn on the live game mode. And then the live game needs to get at the top. Oh yes, that's. I was like, why isn't that appearing? Bam! There we go. There we go. Ta -da. Let's let's put ourselves. Where where do we want to be? Bottom right. We don't use, do we? Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah. Uh... Okay. Right. We need a Windows 10 flash drive, which is here. Good. We need a keyboard and mouse. Uh, we need a keyboard and mouse, which and is here. We need a here. flash drive for storing stuff. And uh, flash drive. I'll grab my um. I'll grab my SSD. Okay. Right. Which is in you... the back of this computer. Okay, I'll rip that out. Uh, let's do that. There's a disappointing number of USBs on the back here. They're really good USBs. There's just not many of them. They needed to add in just like another two stack of USB 2s or something. There is a cursor. Curses. Success. Oh. Uh... All right, and I'll chuck that in up there. All right. Ah, that was what I wanted. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Kind of. Yeah, that yeah, that gives you something usable. So um, I just I'll... meant to do it to the other screen. How do I unproject this? Uh, or right click doing... on the projected image. Or will doing that do what I want? No. Yeah, now right <laughs> click on that one and click close. Caradog's just slowly <laughs> covering every screen we have with the same preview image. <laughs> and it's just like, we're losing more and more of it here. <coughs> right. We're losing it. We've lost it. Yeah. Uh, we're going to want an internet connection. I'll grab a uh, wireless dongle. Wireless adapter. I hate the word dongle. I just like dongles. Like, I, unironically, I really dis I really hate the term dongle. Uh, right, I'll leave this dongle. unplugged for now because we don't want it in while we're doing the setup. We can go there. Ah, yes, the new dongle. Dongle. Uh, okay, right. Catching up on the chat. Ha, <laughs> dong. Did it. Is anyone with me there, though? Because also, just someone comes in and goes, I think I need a dongle. And you're just like, that's such a generic term that it could be a million different things. And they're like, I, I need the internet dongle. And then you're like, Okay, do you mean a Wi-Fi adapter or do you mean a mobile broadband adapter? And like, a dongle. Uh, just... So like when someone comes in and they ask for a memory stick and you have to be like, do you mean a USB flash drive or do you mean a Sony brand memory stick? Because they're not the same thing. I think you mean a flash drive. Do you know what I do? What? When, when, when referring to devices such as these. Yeah. I say, oh yes, the pen drive, flash drive, thumb drive, USB storage medium. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone calls them something different and no one knows what they are. I just call it a flash drive. But that's a flash drive. Yeah. But that's not that. They do the same they do the same thing though. Which means you can still use the also, same thing. Also, is this the Windows one? Yes. That's the Windows one. Did it. Thumb drive. Could do. Graham is a little cranky to aren't I every day though? <laughs> uh let's see. Yeah. No, wait, hold on. We must save the valuable. Uh what are we drinking there? Uh Paige, we have got Meon Valley Cider, specifically the brown trout. Yes. It's a medium dry. 
Uh, this was purchased by um, a friend of mine. He bought, uh, we. this is the last two bottles of the Mion. Um, we've been working our way through this over the past couple of weeks. Uh, it's a local, I think it's, I think my friend is local to the Mion Brewery, which is where he bought them from. But yeah, the Mion, they're really good. This is a, this is some of the best cider I've, I've had. It's fantastic. Would you, would you care to unplug this? Whoop. Thank you. Uh... Do you, do you need something or are you just isolating? No, I'm just unplugging it because we're installing Windows now. Mm. And so I'm we don't making... accidentally just sure overwrite that, everything. Um, where is... Um... Boot options? Oh, there you go. No, Sartre mode is AHC. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just make sure it wasn't sure. a legacy. Because yeah. that was the make, m mistake we made. Yes, that is fine. That is oh, fine. yeah. Oh, that was because we were installing on the Z97, wasn't it? Yeah, we originally set this up on the Sabertooth and it defaulted to Legacy. And then it yeah. approximately had kittens. Yeah, and I think that's one of the reason. That's one of the reasons why we're remaking this. Is it actually a Legacy boot on there at the moment? I think it might be. I'm pretty sure I just selected the wrong thing. Uh, so am I, because we're not in the Windows <laughs> setup. Just do Shift Restart and select USB device. Oh. Ah, too late. Hmm. May need to hunt down a bottle. I'll keep an eye out for some. Is medium dry and the same as medium wet? Yeah. Well, we. Oh yes, because that's... I won't go into too much detail because we we spent about twenty minutes last week. And I said discussing... we'd do it again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we spent about twenty minutes discussing this. I didn't see any hate in the comments, mind you. I was expecting to see at least a couple of comments on last week's um, podcast going. We don't care about the cider. Talk about computers. Um, but I, apparently everyone was interested in us prattling on very pretentiously about cider. It um, was a bit. We yeah, aren't that yeah. pretentious. <laughs> but um, only slightly pretentious. Absolutely. But um, yeah. Um, is something came up? Yeah, last week. Um, I, I can't remember where I was. Um, yeah, you, you know. Okay, DM me. Uh, DM me on Discord page, and I'll link you to last week's cider review. Um, I can link you to the um, to the vod and the point where we start talking about it. Um, but uh, but yes, uh, with for those of you who don't know, with ciders you got uh, you get sweet, medium, dry, medium. No, sweet, medium, medium, dry, then dry, um, and I'm probably brute. <laughs> Yeah, Farmer Joe's bathtub <laughs> special. Yeah. Um, Wait, isn't that the Gamer Girl edition? Oh no. So the dry ones tend to be more bitter or have a a more a more bitter aftertaste to them, and sweet ones are your sweet ones are your record league, your Copperberg, Copperberg record league. That those are very sweet ciders. Medium dry is the best, in my opinion. It's it's accessible while being an authentic taste kind of thing. If you only like, see, I was about if, to if say, you if, if you only like cider that is actually purely tastes of Coca Cola, you then maybe don't you don't like, like cider. cider. Yeah, but on the flip side, that also though, at the end of the day, you can drink whatever you like because, like, I've had this discussion with my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law has two sugars in his coffee. And I keep saying to him, have you considered trying to drop down to one sugar? You'll probably find that it still takes off the edge, the bitter edge of the coffee, without destroying the flavour. Um, also a case of it's probably just better to have less sugar. Yeah. However, he's just like, to be honest, I drink coffee because I, I, I like to drink coffee as a sweet drink. And I'm like, well, you know what? You can have it any way you like, I guess, can't you? I don't. Anyway, I, yeah, like I don't agree with his it. two sugars in a coffee, but at the end of the day, it's his coffee. He can drink it any way he likes, yeah. and it's if you only like cup. You know, uh, you know, my partner likes the Thatcher's rosé cider, and I'm just like, oh come on, it's literally pink. But it's all right. It's not bad. Yeah, if you if that's what you like, then enjoy it. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Did I ever consider putting the Adamant IT logo and my business info on the boot screen? I've not really, but that much only because I can't be bothered. Um, Would that make it difficult for them to do a BIOS update later? Because the image, so. the the, the, the check code of the BIOS version it's on there mm. wouldn't match up with what the updater is expecting. Ooh, 
pass. So would it go, oh, actually your installed version is corrupted, therefore no updates? I wouldn't have thought so. Um, there are some instances where that there are some things you can change that might cause problems with that. With that. The boot screen, I very much doubt it. Stuff like that is probably... Uh, I mean, you need to talk to, Ar uh, to Arnold about that. You no, know it flushes it out in the next BIOS update. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. You lose the image on an update. No, there, there you go. That answers that question. No, I see. Hmm. Uh, Getting Prentice. ready. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, scan computers do that on most of their motherboards. Yeah. It's I just assumed that that was a partner size deal thing where yeah. they go to a motherboard manufacturer and say, please, where you have an official BIOS with. No, it's not particularly difficult to achieve. Although, that much being said, I doubt very much that scan are manually um, doing. Well, no, actually, uh, all scan need to do is have a chap who does. A BIOS modification for them, and then they can just flash update them every motherboard they get in, or every motherboard that they do a build on with the one that has the BIOS image on it and the latest version. Yeah, so that would be very straightforward for a system integrator to do. Like, you don't need them to actually manually program the chip. Is this is the operative there? Um, but yeah, I would certainly consider it because I do want to think. I'm. I don't know. I'm not super bothered about building up Adamant IT as a brand. Uh, and I don't think I need to, if I'm honest. Uh, like I think anyone who gets into this job has this dream of building up their own brand of PC, of be, you know, of being a system integrator. Like everyone's just like, oh, I want to get a custom case or get a ca cases that have got my logo laser engraved on it or something like that. And like that's a really cool idea, but also it's a lot of work that doesn't actually have anything to do with whether your product is any good. And like a lot of people. People are coming to me to get a computer built because either A, they're local, and I'm just the nearest person, B, um, they have seen my videos and they're like, I like your, I like the cut of your jib, I trust you to build me a good computer, or C, um, they, want the, they want the bragging rights of saying my computer was built by Adamant IT, who has a popular YouTube channel, and all are valid. So, but none of these really require that custom BIOS screen. But it would also be very cool. You know what? When I finally get an actual, when I finally get new branding, the new logo and stuff like that, I will probably consider doing that because it would be cool. Yeah. I think the other reason why I don't care is that I don't have any branding that I'm attached to. Yeah. That's the thing. All I have at the moment is Adamant IT in the font Glacial Indifference. That's my logo at the moment. And the uh, name of that font is hilariously appropriate. Yes. <laughs> Glacial indifferent. So for those of you who don't know, the originally Adamant IT was done in the font called Futura, uh, which is a very well-known font that's used for Hollywood posters and stuff like that. However, Futura is not is a licensed font. It's not free. So these days I use Glacial Indifference, which is a royalty-free knockoff of Futura. Uh, and so, yeah, and glacial indifference generally summarizes my disposition in most instances. So <laughs> I am indifferent and I move at a glacial pace. Yeah. Don't send me your computers for repair. I'm slow as hell. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> mm. well, Army Magician said, I had an Atari logo on my arcade, but you lost it on an update. That's cool. That would be cool to apply again. Uh, usually the internal update mechanism skips multiple blocks, including the logo section. That's interesting, yeah. Obviously, it depends on the, 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 the BIOS in question. It's a bit pretentious for the things. Yeah, I, I think that's the other thing that concerns me, is it's a bit pretentious. Um, but sometimes, sometimes pre pre pretentious is an opinion. Sometimes if you want to be cool, you've got to own it. You've got to be like, yeah, what about it? I built this PC. It's got my name on it, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it's a difficult call to make. I think it depends on if you're tasteful about it as well. If I did it, I would want to be quite tasteful about it. Um, you know, I want my logo. I, I'd like my logo to be a tasteful logo that people are like, that's cool. That's very inoffensive and looks good, you know. Um, whereas you know, I, I wouldn't be as like a sort of a adamant IT explosion. 
and all the rest of it. That would be a bit, yeah. The last time I did a custom BIOS screen was probably in 2002 on my Pentium 3 copper mine motherboard because it had a utility that came with the motherboard on the on the driver's disk. It came with a utility for putting in a custom BIOS screen. And I put on my own custom BIOS screen. So wow. yeah. The important parts. I was just going to say, you've gone straight <laughs> in for the important parts I see there. So yeah. <laughs> um, so yes, you think that should be an opt-in by, by the customer? Yeah, that would be reasonable. Um, but, you know, if you're going to bother to do an opt-in, you may as well just not bother at all, in my opinion. I guess I could have it as an option. Like, at some point, if I was if I was doing custom builds at, like, several times a week, I should have a, a spec list, a, a, a form that people fill out. And I could have an option that just says, have the Adam and IT branding on the boot screen because you think that looks cool, you know. And for the people who are just like, yeah, I think that looks cool, they can opt into that. And for the people who are just like, no, just the, the thing, please. Because there are times where it's going to look cool and sometimes where it doesn't. Because, like, some motherboards have got really smart... Like, this, the Aorus boot screen looks pretty cool. You've just got the Aorus logo. Um, the ROG logo looks pretty good on a boot screen. But, like, MSI on some of their motherboards have a terrible habit mm. of having a weird futuristic race car as the boot screen. And I'm just like, it just looks dorky. That's a boot screen that I would replace. Yeah. So I think it depends on the motherboard. Does the motherboard already have a tasteful boot screen? So yeah. Oh blimey, I'm seeing a hot take in the chat. Uh, Ravniev, uh, on the topic of fonts, said it's the Arial to Helvetica. Are you implying that Arial is a cheap knockoff of Helvetica? Because <laughs> that's a hot take. Although to be honest, Helvetica is a very tasteful font. So, you know, this is the point where I go, Helvetica standard. And anyone who understands that reference is immediately cool. You prefer no boot logo. Yeah. Just the Windows loading screen, I suppose. MSI is terrible. It depends. Some of their boards have got terrible ones. AI Suite lets you drop in a JPEG for the BIOS logo. That'll be for Asus stuff, I suppose. Is AI Suite still relevant? For all of your anime waifu needs. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, Concept Soup says, Hi Graham in the chat. Does anyone know of a good tutorial for creating an out-of-box experience where the customer can set up their username, etc., but the PC will have apps and drivers pre-installed? Windows has got you covered there. When you install Windows and you get to the first run screen where it says, welcome to Windows, please type in what you want your username to be in, you do, uh, what is it, Control-Shift-F3? Oh, no. Yeah, I think it's Control-Shift-F3. And Windows will go into, um, will go into what's called audit mode. Uh, I, I did a YouTube short on this. Uh, search the channel for... Search search my channel for audit mode, A-U-D-I-T. Um, and I've got it in there. I demonstrate audit mode. And what that will do, that will put Windows into the administrator account where you can install all of the drivers and any relevant software. And then afterwards, you can exit audit mode and it will go back to the Windows setup. So then when your customer receives the computer, they go through the setup screen and they can put in their username and password. But when they hit the desktop, all of the relevant software will be pre-installed. So yeah, yeah, Control Shift F3, Mark White just confirmed. So yeah. You can also go and run SysPrep. That is part of audit mode, I think, isn't it? Um, unless I'm mistaken, but yeah. Right, I now have GPU drivers. I'm going to <laughs> quickly use the bathroom. Um, and well. uh, while I do that, why don't you start telling people what you're going to start doing here? Indeed. What, what I am doing is setting up this uh, SSD. Um, so it's got a Windows install on there. And then install having some basic... Having some basic uh, diagnostic software on there and some benchmarking software on there, which is basically one in the same. Um, 
part of that is going to be having heaven on there and super position and things like that. But also a case of just because Benchmate includes Super Pi, hardware, info, um, Cinebench, R20, R23, etc. I do, I just generally just install Benchmate. So it's got all of the bits installed anyway. And it also, as far as I'm aware, actually will keep sort of rec a log of which versions you're using, which is useful as well for if you're actually doing competitive benchmarking and so on. But just for us, because we're using it mostly for testing, that record of which version specifically you're using isn't necessary. It's just a good thing to have for if you're, as I said, doing competitive overclocking. And yeah, I like it just because it bundles a whole bunch of stuff into a single installer and it's known working versions because obviously someone has specifically curated them into a version of their software. So years. Basically, that's just running the installer now, but I'll launch it in a second. It'll just show you all the stuff that it includes. Do, 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 do. Yeah, and then when that's done, I'll install Heaven. Have we got an installer for Superposition? Or do I need to grab one? I think it might already be on this. Ah, fair enough. It should be. If it's not, it's on the other. I just didn't really want to go drive. poking around in the folders on there because I didn't know what was going to be on there. Uh, there should be anything personal. I'll just quickly double check. There's not supposed yeah. to be anything personal on this, but I'll go and. No, check indeed, but it was a case that yeah. I didn't know, so I didn't. Yeah, no. Better safe than sorry. Um, I'll just verify. Yeah, absolutely. No, not installing Windows 11. Because it's a test SSD, we need to use it for on basically all of the hardware that we have. So it's a case that obviously some of that stuff is 4th gen, Intel, and things like that. Um, so we'd want just a Windows 10 install because it's simple and you don't need to do any hoop jumping to make it work on a 4th gen Intel or AMD FX or anything like that. And probably what we're going to do once this setup is finished is just snapshot the drive so we've got an image of it. And if we can if we end up corrupting it, it doesn't matter. We can just restore that image. Uh, yeah, confirmed. There's nothing personal on this. There's there's a bunch of video stuff because I use this for moving footage yeah. back and forth. But there's, there's, no there's nothing in there that's private per se. Yeah, just absolutely. Just chunks of unedited video. Uh, and also, yes, it has got superposition and heaven on it. Cool. Okay. There you go. And then Benchmate is just going to launch itself now. And basically, that's just what Benchmate looks like. And if you see on here, it allows you to launch a specific version of 7-Zip, specific versions of Cinebench, CPU-Z, GPU-Z, GPU-Pi, hardware info, etc. And they're specific versions inside specific versions of Benchmate and it just tells you the full version number and stuff like that so you can keep a record of that. Do you want to stick that on our higher DPI setting just to I make it easier to read? Also, good point, yep. go to uh, blind mode. There you go. Yeah, there we go. That makes it a bit easier for people to see without having to full screen. Yeah, and then basically a case of just if I want hardware info 64, I can just double click on it or launch it and it will just run. Yeah, I think this is my favourite part of Benchmate is the fact is the fact that, uh, like, because initially when you mentioned Benchmate, I was just like, this sounds like extra steps. I can just launch hardware info, but the fact that it comes with them all is the thing. Is just like mm. this has got all the mainstream stuff in that everyone that people care about, you know. So you just you download <clears throat> Benchmate and that's it. You've got all the stuff that matters. Yeah, exactly. And within just, reason. Yeah, and it's just a case of you have. Cinebench on there, you have GPU Pi, yeah, etc. So you can just launch them all from here. And the other thing you can do, I think you can also add in other software to this, so yeah, so it appears in this list. So if, if you're doing uh, if you're doing superposition runs, you know, like I, I mean, I don't think I don't think superposition or heaven is a is a benchmark that anyone particularly cares about. No. Um, however, if you wanted to, you could add that in. Yeah. The other like, thing I, I I run those for stability tests, but yeah. they're not. This is designed for competitive overclocking. Yeah, basically. And yeah, superposition and heaven are not any anything that anyone cares about for competitive overclocking. Yeah, 
And the thing as well with this is um, it changes the default setting for Cinebench. So it takes it into the actual score giving mode by default. Because nice. by default, it launches in the 10 minute um, stress test mode. Peak, so stress test. Yeah. So it's just straight into give me a score mode. Yeah. Um, and then it literally runs just as normal Cinebench because it is normal Cin Cinebench. But it says guarded by Benchmate at the top. Oh, and yeah. And basically it just it counts as a level of verification that you've not modified the program. Yeah. Um, and that's obviously important at high-end overclocking yeah. things because someone might be trying to cheat. Yeah. Looks like, I presume it wouldn't be overall too difficult just to... You know, change the score the program displayed. Yeah, you could probably just dial in a hard. You could probably edit it and make it so there's just a hard coded score that it will spit out on completion. Yeah, and you just make that number something that is high but believable or yeah. something like that. You make that. it so it's like you know four yeah. points higher than the current. Yeah, high score. However, it still goes through the song and dance of actually rendering, um, so it looks legit. It's just spat out a predetermined number. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know if that's an, actually a problem that occurs. It not wouldn't specifically, surprise me, but, but it means that it is not a problem. Yeah, if that makes sense, it means yeah. that no one needs to be concerned as to if it is a problem because there is no problem. Yeah, but yeah, and then see, it just gives you a result exactly the same as the normal version does. Nice. So yeah, it is. It is just a handy. Also, you have this kind of thing. It's certainly not necessary. Hmm. But um, oh, actually, hold on. I closed that and I didn't mean to. So I meant to show the other thing it does. Why well, I just do that and wait for it to spit out a thing. Because you can then get it to pop up a little overlay, which is effectively a verification overlay. Oh, right, yeah. But you need to have a score in Benchmate for it to do it. Okay, And yeah. Cinebench dumps its scores as soon as you close it. Yeah. So there, there was no score to do anything with. Yeah. So just wait for it to finish. Right. Luckily, Rising Go Burr. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to. This is the 3700X, so it's still crunching through this. It's it's still a cracking CPU, this. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, off it goes. Um, so, yeah. Uh, also, just because there's a bit of discussion on it uh, for Windows 11, um, uh, you're not using 11 on anything at the moment, are you? You're on 10 on stuff yeah, at the moment. Yeah, purely, purely because I can't move the taskbar. Yeah, and oh, I yeah. Have, I have a weird screen layout. Yeah. Which basically requires me to have the taskbar on different. Yeah. I've been running 11, um, I've been using the the shop Lianli, I've been using that quite a lot in recent times, and that's got 11 on it, and I'm kind of using that as my um, quote-unquote proving ground for 11, uh, and so far, um, like, there is stuff that has moved about, but I don't have an issue with it. So my, my basic opinion of 11 is I feel like they should have just done a theme update for Windows 10, um, however, I've not encountered any issues with 11 that have made me go, this makes me not want to use 11. Um, but also, so far, there's not enough there. The only possible reason why I want to upgrade my home computer is to get the, 11, the Windows 11 theme, because I think it looks nice. Windows 10 is starting to look very dated, and I think Windows 11 looks nice and fresh and new. Um, however, I think... Getting a, a new theme is a poor excuse to upgrade an operating system. So, yeah. yeah. However, I've got no beef with 11. Yeah. So, yeah, that there we go. There's the official school thing. So And this just yeah. sort of confirms the information about the computer and just kind of goes, this yeah. is the build, here's an integrity check, blah, 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 blah. This is something that is nice and easy to share with someone that shows you the score you got and what you use to achieve that score. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> nice just because there are yeah and it's certainly a requirement on like um hardware bot and things like that for you to have the bench mate that overlay is a part of the screenshot that you submit yeah yeah that makes sense so yeah the only issue is it doesn't fit very well on the screen when oh you're yeah scaling on yeah that i yeah i see why you changed this game now that's fine yeah just because it, it went here and here <laughs> yes Understandable. Have a nice day. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's also I think a requirement for you to have like certain bits of like CPU Z visible for certain things and stuff like that. Yeah. 
And just like, as you can see, there are certain specific versions that it says X for and things like that. Hmm. But there's also like benches and stuff in CPU Z, which I'd entirely forgotten about. Hmm. Bench this CPU. Fair enough. See ya. I was certainly hitting the CPU hard enough. Yeah, it bears mention that Cinebench is not the most punishing test you can do with a CPU. It's just a very easy and accessible baseline. There we go. Ta da. And then Versus 5950X. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Unsurprisingly, it got spanked by 5950X, but you know. Yeah. Compared to a 3950X, a yeah. single core is. Have they got, fractionally faster. Have they got a 5600X as a reference there? Because no. that would be an interesting comparison. The 3700X versus the 5700... The, sorry, the 3700X versus the 5600X. Yeah. But I would contend... Oh, there you go. There's, There's a, a reference to it. Oh, so this one's actually scoring high compared to the reference versus the reference. Compared to their reference, yeah. Yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. Although, pre presumably that reference is done with no motherboard fiddling involved. And nice. by default, this motherboard is probably doing extent all core, uh, higher all core boosting than the listed spec for the CPU, because pretty much all motherboards are going to be doing something to make your CPU go faster. It will be called core enhance, core boost, something like that, where it's basically just boosting the CPU harder than the than AMD's specification, because all CPUs can go a little harder, you know. So, very well. So, yeah. Uh, the 3700X is marginally higher in Cinebench than your 5600X. That's interesting. Yeah. I think we'll probably find the 5600X will probably have a higher single thread score. Um, that's probably where the 5600X will win out, is it'll have much better... Um, it'll have better IPC, so you'll get a better single thread score. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we, I, we... We probably won't run a single thread on this because single thread takes ages yeah, because absolutely. single thread. But yeah, but yeah, that's where your 5600X would, would come back in, would hit back, is it'll have better single thread performance. Yeah, on the Gigabyte boards, it's this core cool performance boost setting. Uh, yeah. yeah. But for some reason, on the V450 and the X470 boards, mm. um, having that set to disabled seems to knock out your boost entirely. Yeah. And you just get locked to like three gigahertz or something. And that really annoys me is I like that motherboards have core performance boost and equivalence on them. And I like that it's on by default, but it's annoying that there's no way to disable it without completely binning the CPU. Yeah. You know, there should be an option to say, no, don't do anything. Just run it by spec. Yeah. Um, just because there are various instances where you might want to do that. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's not something that the average person should be worried about, though, you know. So, yeah. Uh, very well. Yeah, absolutely. But it is, yeah, that option for the boosty bit, and I don't know. <laughs> well, for, on the on the post screen there, just, again, this could be Graham's face. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> Very well. Oh, hold on. Is this keeping this RAM in it? No. Okay. Um, no. Uh, uh, I will be putting... Uh, this is not going to be an RGB... Well, no, this is not going to be an RGB setup. It may end up with some RGB in it, but uh, most likely... I mean, I could... I can turn on XMP later. Yeah. If that's what you were thinking. Yeah. That was Unless right. there's anything you want to do. Like, if there's something that you want to show off, then. Not specifically. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, cool. I'm right. just going to leave it in a state of being. Yeah. That's reasonable. Uh, let's see. But there you go. It actually boots reasonably fast now. It's yeah. It's taking three minutes. Yes. That, um, that Windows install is no longer balked. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, right, let's see. Been scrolling through the chat. I've done one movie. Fair enough. Hmm. Yeah. Because cool. uh, yeah, it's not going to be a 
You finally got here. Welcome in, Ducani. I fear you've arrived at the end of everything, because I have a suspicion we might be about to wrap up. Um, what's the OBS timer on? Do you just... Oh, I'm just going to alt-tab to OBS, just so I can check what our timer is on. Very well. Uh, the timer is on. 2 hours 20. Yeah, 2.20. All right. And where's our full screen? There it is. All right. Have we got anything else to do? Not specifically. Yeah. Um... Yeah, any more que any other questions from chat? Otherwise, I think we're going to wrap up, if I'm honest, because uh, we've done what we set out to do. We built up this system. This system has a couple more bits to do. Um, I'm going to switch back to... Uh, I'm going to... Uh, hang on a sec. Yeah. I'm just going to give you guys um, the main screen. That is desktop. That is desktop. You want one below that? That's the one I want. There we go. There you go. You can carry on fiddling now. Um, but yes, we, we this needs right. a slightly better cooler. Yeah, what, you, what what temperatures are we getting? Uh, sixty five ish. However, we're dropping three hundred ish megahertz off the boost. Is that's all cool though, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But it, if 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 that makes sense, it needs a slightly better cooler than this is. Yeah, and then you'd be fine. Yeah, Which that's is, right. I mean, to be honest, it is a baby cooler that's on there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, but just so in case actually, of, yeah. as a general like, statement. You need a slightly better cooler than yeah. that, and then you'll be fine. Yeah. So, so um, yeah. So, take away what stuff that we need to do then. So, this needs a better cool. I might. Hmm, I, I was. I could put one of the krakens in this. It's perfect for it. Like they could, need, they need testing, but there's no reason why I can't stick one of the krakens that we refurbished in this. Yeah. So I think I'm. Certainly. I think I'll do that. I'll lob a kraken in this because it'll look great. And on that note, I might end up leaving the ballistics in here and doing selling it as an RGB build because it'll have the Kraken, it'll have uh, the case has got an RGB strip, and I can have at least one RGB fan in it, which makes for a modest RGB setup, or at least enough that I can just stick it all on white and you've got some glowy bits, which yeah. itself is a nice effect. Even if you're not going colours, um, just going. Uh, black with white glowy bits is yeah. a good look because that's what I want to do with the with the YouTube rig. Um, I'm oh, yeah. yeah, I want to put the Trident in there and just stick it on white and stick yeah. the motherboard RGB on white as well because the graphics card has got white LEDs on it and the capture True. card has got white LEDs, so it would just be black with white glowy bits on it, which is a good look. I think it might be quite hard to match the white. That's glow. the problem with white, yeah, is you're never color matched. Yeah. Um, so that's a good point. I'll see if it works. Otherwise, yeah. uh, failing that, I could just change it to all blue or something like that. Yeah. If you're if you're doing an RGB setup and you set it to white and you find that all of your LEDs are a different shade of white, just um, switch to a different color. Go for all purple or all blue or something like that. And you'll probably find one color where all of your LEDs are pretty well matched. Blues are normally the sticking point, in my experience. Um, I think blue is where they usually get hung up, which is why, for example... Because the, blue is the hardest yeah. LED to make, effectively. Yeah. Because like, there isn't a blue... There isn't actually a blue emitting silicon, is there? I think you're correct, yeah. And it's, and it's always done with phosphors? Yeah, I think they're actually UV, and they use a phosphor that reacts to UV at, by emitting blue. Or something like that. Remember, yeah. the, like the Lianli has this problem because you can see that the um, the front fans are a different shade of purple to the rear fan. And um, the the rear Lianli fan is a much more dim witted RGB mm. and doesn't do it that just same looks rich brighter. purple. Yeah, but from, it, certainly from this angle, it just looks brighter. Yeah, it doesn't have the same shade. Actual the, shade. the actual shade, the actual shade of purple I dialed in, oh. a really nice iridescent purple. It's got like it's. It's got a really nice mix of blue and red that makes it just a nice, vibrant purple. Whereas the rear fan is just hot pink, basically, um, and it's fine. But you know, if we're being if we're being picky, then it's yeah. not perfect. You know, except for brown. Brown it's, isn't a color. Brown is not a color. Go and watch the te uh, go and watch the technology connections video. Brown is weird. So yeah. brown is not a color. Brown is just orange. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Brown is just uh, brown is dark orange. Yes. That's it in a nutshell, basically. 
good. Right, let's see. I asked earlier on if anyone had any more questions, and then I just didn't read the chat. So oh, dear. I'm, oh, I'm going to have a... Um, let's see, I'm going to quickly... No, 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 SVM stuff. Um, I was scrolling through the chat. Yeah, I think we're back. Mm-hmm. Implications of using non-commercial programs to improve. The implications of using non-commercial use program on your stream possibly earned pounds. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. There were no questions. I've enjoyed this conversation in English. Absolutely. This um, is a statement. Yes. I have enjoyed this conversation in English. Yeah. Right, thanks for tuning in, everyone. So, Oh, yeah, I was saying, so there are a couple of bits we're going to change on this. Um, I will do a modest RGB setup on it. I'm going to swap the cooler out for the Kraken, I think. Um, and then I'm probably going to change the RAM. Well, no, I'm, I think I'm going to leave this RAM in there, probably. Um, yeah. Then after that, this thing is going to go on sale in the shop, I think. Um, because it's a it's a it's a nice mid range gaming PC. Yeah. It wants a better graphics card for the CPU that it has, but the 1066 gig still holds up for 1080p yeah, gaming. That's okay. My partner's running a 1066 gig and it runs remarkably well. Um, it's surprising that those things, you know, you, um, yeah, she started up Forza Horizon Five on it and it was fine, you know. So yeah, uh, they're all right. Wild Floor Lamp still disappointed that nothing exploded. I'm sorry. Um, we'll win. We'll win eleven ever except a lower config. No. no, because that's the point of Win Eleven. The main reason why Windows Eleven exists is to give Microsoft an excuse to cut off the bottom of the market. Yeah, and that's not because of some kind of conspiracy to make you all buy a new PC. It's to stop people from selling crap laptops. Um, because the thing is. I've had. I'll very quickly go through this rant. Everyone goes out and they buy the cheapest laptop money can buy, and then surprised when it's not very good. And then they go out and they buy an Apple laptop. They go and buy themselves a MacBook Air for the three times the cost. That's right. For for a cool twelve hundred pounds, and they go, "Oh, this is brilliant! I had a Windows laptop. It was awful. Then I bought a Mac, and it was really good. I bloody expect it to be good for twelve hundred pounds." You know, so Microsoft are getting sick and tired of hearing that. So they're going, you can't sell these netbooks with 32 gigs of EMMC and potato CPUs in them. We will not allow you to put Windows on that anymore because they're crap and they're garbage and they're terrible. Yeah. So Windows 11 has a very high minimum spec to force a higher minimum standard of, of laptop. Yeah. And yeah, this means that it will push up the bottom end of the market. But if yeah. you want a cheap laptop, you go and buy a Chromebook. If you Chromebooks want... are great. Yeah. And it annoys me how much people hate on them. Yeah. When it's like, do you know what most people do on a computer? They watch YouTube. Yeah. They browse and the internet. they scroll Facebook. That's right. And do you know what a Chromebook does really well? Yeah. It browses YouTube and That's scrolls right. Facebook. I mean, granted, there's some crap Chromebooks out there, but also they cost like £200, so who cares? You know? Yeah. Um, I mean, there, there was pre-pandemic some Chromebooks coming in for like 130 quid new. Yeah, and it's like buying a full device, brand new, for 130 quid with two years of warranty yeah. on it. Yeah, and that's a netbook. However, selling selling these potato laptops with full-blown Windows installed, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah, and that is what micro. That's why Microsoft set very high limits on Windows 11, and that's why it's a good thing that Windows 11 has a very high minimum standard. Yeah, and yeah. There are some there are some edge cases where people have got modern computers that technically don't meet the requirements for Windows 11. Yeah. But that is a very small minority. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, by the time Windows 10 goes out of critical support, your computer will be obsolete. And yeah. that's and it's a, it's elitist to say. And I know that that is going to there. I know that there are people in like third world countries who don't get the latest tech. So it's easy for us to say in the UK when we've got high end, where we've got top end systems lying around here, you know. However, there's there's no obligation for Microsoft to support decade old hardware. Yeah. And it's sh- also a case of Windows 11 not supporting older than 8th gen on Intel doesn't mean they've said the software will not run. Mm. It means they will not provide any support for it. Yeah. You rock up and go, oh, for some reason my 6700 doesn't boot. And they'll go, 
that's because it's not supported. Yeah. Go away. Because also, people... and that's what it allows them to do. Yeah. That's what. That's what people seem to forget about what supported means in a Microsoft this is what in, I was in, about a, to say. in a software sense like that. It means that you will be provided support. Yeah. It doesn't mean functions on. If you go and buy a copy of Windows 11, you go out and you buy Windows 11, you pay money for it, you're entitled to support, which means if you are having a problem with Windows 11, you are entitled to call up Microsoft and say, my copy of Windows 11 does not work, and they are obligated to try and help you fix your problem. That is what support means. Yeah. However... If you call them up and you say I'm running Windows 11 on a in on a uh, a fourth gen Intel yeah. or if, on a fourth gen i7, Microsoft are going to turn around and go, "That's a decade old CPU. That's your problem. You're trying it's not to support it." Yeah, and they are, and at that point, they are not obligated to help you fix your problem. Yeah, that's what support means. Yeah. Does Microsoft have an obligation to help you fix your problem? Yeah. Support does not necessarily mean works on or or compatible. Support yeah. and compatible are not interchangeable words. Yeah. This is the thing. And yeah, you know, this is the thing. Don't get me wrong, I'm not like this isn't me being a, a Windows 11 fanboy or anything like that. There are bits of Windows 11 that I like and dislike and there are things about Windows 11 that I agree and disagree with. Yeah. However, a lot of people are angry for the wrong reason. And that is the frustration, is a yeah. lot of people are, they're angry or upset for the wrong reason or for an unreasonable reason. Absolutely. And it's a, yeah, and it's a case, again, the fact of, you know, if you can make yourself Windows 11 install on a first-gen i7, mm. then it will function mm. on that first-gen i7. Sure. Yeah. Nothing is explicitly stopping it from doing that. Yeah. However, you will get no support from anyone, most yeah. likely. Because when Windows 11 was first released, like within 24 hours, you had a lot of clever dicks on, on the internet going, oh, I got it to work on this uh, on this Pentium 3 800. Good for you. Microsoft never said that couldn't be done. Yeah. They said they wouldn't support it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So and it's yeah. like, as, as Barmy Magician said, it's like when Windows 10 drops support for Core 2 Duos after 1604. Yeah. They no longer supported it. They are no longer obligated to help you fix your problem. Yeah, yeah. and it's that point. Yeah. Likewise, that because you've got to remember that whenever whenever a security update comes out for Windows, which is daily, they've got to test it on everything. So by not pre- yeah. and if 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 they are supporting a Corti Duo, that means every time Windows every time Microsoft makes an update for Windows 10, for example. They've got to get a Core 2 Duo system and check if that update works on that CPU. Yeah. That is what is involved in supporting something, and that is expensive, man. Yeah. Um, Like, you know, companies like Microsoft, they will have entire centers that are just filled. Like, I'm fairly certain that, like, I, I saw a video once where I think they had a cameraman at a Microsoft like uh, development center or test center where they have just racks of all kinds of computers, all different kinds of Macs as well, where they're testing the latest version of Microsoft Office to see if it works and is stable on particular systems. And yeah. obviously you can only have so many systems in that yeah. room. And it's and it and it makes absolute sense to me for someone to be more aggressive with their culling of support mm. than Microsoft is. Because obviously it costs them money and it means that the price of the product has to be higher to pay for that. So it's a case that, in a way, what would make far more sense is for Intel to basically only say we could only support the current generation of processors, the current generation of graphics cards. If you want support beyond that, you have to pay more money. Mm. If that makes sense, you know, from a pure business point of view, that would make sense. Yeah. Obviously, it probably wouldn't make sense overall because so many people will get annoyed by it mm. but kind of you know if you can make that work yeah um the oculus rift doesn't work on 11 i've got a rift s and that works on 11 i take it the rift is just old enough that Isn't they the rift also not no longer supported by oculus not sure that Did... might be the case yeah i mean i suppose uh perhaps that you might have to use an old installer for it or something like that I don't know. I don't know my headsets well enough. Yeah. Um, 
all I can say is that I have a Rift S and I use that exclusively on a Windows 11 machine. Yeah. Um, so, and the Rift S can't be that much different from the Rift Vanilla. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't know the answer to that one past that. So yeah. W why they made 11 when they promised that 10 would be the last update. Well, now we're getting onto the subject of the reason why 11 exists, and that's because like OEMs wanted a new number. I presume um, so. Yeah. But also kind of a case of it's very hard for you to raise the minimum specification on an in, existing a, in, a product. in a dramatic fashion yeah. on a product that has the same name and for people to not understand why the yeah. version doesn't work when it's called the same thing kind of thing. It was a mistake for them to say that Windows 10 would be the last version of Windows. Like yeah. they, they, what they were trying to portray the significance of the fact that 10 gets build updates. Because again, yeah. a friendly reminder to everyone who doesn't know that if you're running Windows 7, you have got the same build of 7 that came out over 10 years ago. Yeah, you've whenever just got, Service Pack 1 came out. Yeah, you've just got however many updates stacked on top of it. Whereas, Which, as far as I'm aware, also have to be done sequentially. Yeah, it's horrifying. Yeah. Um, however, Windows 10, because we get a new builder update yeah. every six to six to ten months or so, um, obviously you're getting the latest build of Windows with all of the updates baked into it. It's effectively a new service pack every kind every of, yeah. yeah every to, six months. -ish. That's right, to all intent and purpose. Yeah. Um, Which is, and that was a big. That's a big deal yeah. for Windows, and it's really good. Yeah. That's why they said, "Oh, this will be the last version of Windows." However, that was a very, very generalized statement, and it was a mistake yeah. for them to say that because we all knew that that wouldn't. Be it the was. Case. It was a mistake for them to say it in that fashion. Yeah. Because it probably was the last iteration of Windows, if that makes sense, in the sense of design philosophy. Yeah. Because they were going to go, ah, yeah, no, build updates are the way forward. There's no, you know, we see no way of going beyond build updates. Kind yeah, of thing, I guess, but it's just weird. Yeah, or well, certainly it was also implying that because uh, at that point we're now discussing of Windows as being a service, and I think yeah. it's reasonable to say that Windows is now a service. Kind of, um, you know. I don't know. How, I don't know what your... that specifically means. Yeah, that's it. In I mean, sense of an operating system, we can have... You don't have to pay a subscription for it and things like that. Well, that's just it. We can have an entire con we can have an entire podcast conversation about this because what you're paying for that service is not is is completely different. But you're still buying a service effectively because it is a product that is routinely updated and expected to be on whatever the current version is but i don't know we're, we're getting wildly into tangents here that we're yeah uh, so yeah I'm, anyway. I'm very interested in this conversation however um we should probably wrap up and talk about this another time perhaps, perhaps. indeed so yes i have enjoyed this conversation in english indeed good evening yep. all we are going to wrap up because yeah so thanks everyone for tuning in um uh links for support and stuff are in the description down below um yeah thanks for all the super chats and all of that good stuff thanks for all of the channel members as well whether you're members on the you know for people who are members on the main channel um and that's about it i think so yeah um yeah that's it we're gonna head off thank you very much for watching everyone and we will see you next week with something to lose Meh.